home to iconic figures such as Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, and the famed Tuskegee Airmen. Welcome to historic Tuskegee University for broadcast coverage of Tuskegee University basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Harris lost it. Jackson took it away. Up the floor. Willis, she'll have to run that down. Able to save it to Jackson. Jackson got the lay in left side. Davis away from the arc. Right corner. Jumper. Got it. Nur Rahim entry pass Jackson. Foul on extended. That's Willis. Yes, set. Dully, right side free. Dumps it down low inside the paint. Got it inside. And Martez Jones there with the finish on the flush. Rolling out front. McElroy, another three, count it again. Boyd, cross dribble, five to shoot, pushes a three, brings a three for the Tigers. Now back to Boyd, Booker's free, thinks three, fires a three, brings a three for the Tigers. Rebound Draper, outlet pass Pennington. Pennington pushing right side, bounce pass, nicely done, Davis got the lay in for Tuskegee. Bolin pops a three, brings another three for the Tigerettes. Bowling, entry pass inside, McKee to the rack left side, and she got the first step and got the lay Back across the floor, Pennington, head fake inside the paint, all the way through underneath, got the spinner to fall for the Golden Tigers. Chase down, Stannard behind the back pass to save it. Hallwood took it away for Kabamba, Booker for three, book it! Bowling, Cox fires a three, bingo for Bowling. Uh, Pennington on the floor now, pushes inside, Draper, Draper pass to Dukas, got the flush. Jackson goes to work inside the paint. Jumper, got it, and a whistle. Well, he fires the jumper, oh yeah. And here comes Tuskegee, leading by 12. Over to Boyd, pushing the three, count the three. Boyd nails it. Carter got some space, leans back with the jumper, missed on the shot. Booker got a chance to float it toward the cylinder, and he hit it. Does it count? It will count. Look at Booker. My, oh my. Now, let's go inside the Daniel Chappie James Center for live coverage with the voice of Tuskegee University basketball, Mr. Charles Ward. And welcome everybody upstairs. We're live in the Chappie James Center getting set for Tigerette basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Men's basketball to follow with the Golden Tigers. Both squads meeting the Marauders of Central State in basketball action in our doubleheader this Saturday. Glad you could join us. Charles Ward here with the play-by-play -play story. For the Tigerettes of Tuskegee, looking for their 19th conference win versus no losses, trying to push their mark to 21-3 and if they can win this basketball game this afternoon. They'll meet a team that they met in early January. They beat the Lady Marauders by 10 in that ball game, 66-56. Despite a dismal first half of shooting for the Tigerettes, only shot 28% from the floor. They were able to overcome a deficit in their last ball game in this in, in, on uh, earlier this week on the makeup game with the Lady Dragons of Lane College. Trailed by 14 in that ball game, shot only 28% from the floor. But the second half, they just lit the gym up, shooting 58% from the floor and winning that ball game, going away to be in the position they're in tonight, trying to go to 19-0 in conference play and 22-3 and overall. Stage is set for the Tigerettes of Tuskegee to get set to host the Marauders of Central State. They played in January in the last time they met Tuskegee, forcing the Lady Marauders into 30 turnovers in that ball game, and that was the real key for the Tigerettes on the road winning that contest. Today, we are live and at home in the Chappie James Center on the campus of Tuskegee University. Golden Tigers basketball is just ahead on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. And welcome upstairs, everybody. We're live inside Chappie James Center, getting set for Tigerettes basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. And joining us before her team hits the floor is the head coach of the Tigerettes at Tuskegee, Jelaine Powell. Coach, thanks for joining us in pregame. No problem. Thank you for having me. Well, we wanted to get you after the last ball game because that was <laughs> such a roller coaster ride. <laughs> Just a couple of few minutes to talk about that ball game. 
trailed by as many as we had unofficially 14 points in the game. Cut it to one at the end of the third. Got that first basket to start the fourth, and then you all just took the wheels off of them from there. Your thoughts about that ball game? <laughs> well, we, we've had to learn all year um, to play against a little adversity. So I told him we've been here before. Calm down. We're at home. That's the, the best part about it. So, you know, one possession at a time. Let's get a stop, um, score, and just keep getting stops. And we have upperclassmen leadership, those same voices that echo what I'm saying. Like, we're still in it. Don't hold your heads down. You know, play through your mistakes. So, I mean, it's, it's always great to see these kids kind of, you know, kick down those walls and, and get over that hump. I'm glad to hear you say that because I actually had chills up here during the game. <la> just sitting there thinking, man, they were making so many charges at it throughout mm -hmm. the game, but just never could get it all together. Yeah, but yeah. when it all came together, it was absolutely beautiful. It was a great finish in that ball game. You talk about the leaders coming down the stretch. There were so many in that ball game. We had three people in double figures in that right. contest. If you can, talk about some of the play of any of the ones that come to mind. <laughs> well, the first one that comes to mind is a kid that doesn't start. Aaliyah Austin came off the bench and she was a spark getting grabbing those rebounds, um, getting people to foul her and, you know, get some of those key players for lane out of the game. So she absolutely was a spark. Um, then Jatoria, Jatoria Willis at the top of our defense. She just gets her hands on so many balls and man, it, it starts with her. Um, so when her engine starts going, it's like everybody else just follows. Well, you have the engine going, no question about it. You meet this, this afternoon in basketball, actually, you meet the Marauders of Central State, played mm -hmm. them before, uh, winning fairly convincingly as it relates to the score, but turnovers were a big factor in that contest. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for from them this afternoon, and what's the concentration point for the Tiger Rats? Our concentration is just to stay focused. Um, Central State, they match up with us really well, and the crazy thing about them is they are like all sophomores. So they are young teams, yeah, that are playing at a high level. And I just told them any given night, you know, because of the talent that they have and that they're so young, they don't quit. They just, I mean, they keep coming. And so I think the, the game before is just, again, we kind of turned it on a little bit because it was so much back and forth early. And I'm like, we're on the road, y'all. We got to get some distance. And so that's what happened. The, guy, the light came on. It was like, okay, we got to create some separation if we want to get out of here with a win. Well, we'll be looking to see if you get one this afternoon. It'll take the team to 19 yes. and 0 in conference play and 22 and 3 if we're able to win this ball game. We're getting close to the end of the season and not talking about any issues about pressure or anything, but what do you think the tempo is or the, the temperature is of your team right now? The temperature is, I mean, very hot. I mean, we are, again, just preaching and trying to keep them focused on, like, the opportunity that we have in front of us. Um, and again, it starts with our upperclassmen. And I tell them every day, you guys are put in the work. You deserve this. So continue to work. Don't get complacent. Come out and demand your teammates to work as well. The last couple of ball games we've had on air with the Golden Tiger Sports Network, they have been just like the last one. Just really, the team had to find itself at some point in the ball game. I know this afternoon you're hoping that things will start early yes. and stay at that pace yes. throughout the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have me on the sideline sweating. <laughs> <laughs> every game because it's like you know we come out sometimes so relaxed like we've already won the game and I just told them against good teams like you cannot do that especially the bullseye that you have on your back um, just like we have an opportunity they have an opportunity you know to end our streak so we got to go out and defend it well we'll see if you can defend it this afternoon at Chappie James against the Marauders of Central State coach best of luck Thank you. And we will talk to you after the game today. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we don't care how long we have to sit okay. on there. We'll be here for you. I'll try to make it quick. <laughs> okay. Take your time, though. We're good. Right. <laughs> Head coach Colleen Powell as the Tiger Rats get set to host the Lady Marauders at Central State. Take a time out here and back with more on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. We're back live inside the Chappie James Center getting set for Tigerette basketball. Tuskegee hosting the Lady Marauders of Central State. Conference action this afternoon. Take a look at the starting lineups momentarily here inside Chapel J Chappie James. Starting lineups brought to you by the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association. Tuskegee, McElroy, Willis, Jackson, Bolin, and Thurman McKee familiar there. For the Lady Marauders of Central State. It's Peterson, Ture, Nash, Turner, and Miller starting for Central State. 
jumping for the Tigerettes. It'll be Ashada Jackson, center of the court. She'll jump against Kaylin Nash, the sophomore. Taps up, and we are underway. Saturday afternoon basketball from Tuskegee University. Glad you could join us on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Central State with the basketball first in the right corner with the jumper is Layla Turner, the sophomore. And you, as you heard Coach Powell ref reference in her pregame comments, this team from Central State full of sophomores. Back the other way comes one of the, the seniors on that floor. That's Lorraine, Lorraine Ture, Ture, the senior from Cleveland, Ohio, the lone senior. And in the corner, McElroy fires the first offering for Tuskegee in the corner, and she missed there. Had nine points, one rebound in the win against the Lady Dragons on Wednesday of this week. Half court to Central State now just underway. First quarter of action. They try to dump it down low at the block. Got some space down there. And Nash, the sophomore from Muskegon, Michigan, got the basket for the Lady Marauders. So they get the first two of the ball game. They jump into full court pressure and tap it near the sideline. And it'll stay with Tuskegee. Another thing Coach Powell referenced in her pregame comments is that this squad from Central State is very aggressive on the floor. These sophomores just no quit in them. Saw an example of that on that play there in the backcourt. Bolin up the floor quickly. Right side. Jumper. That one spins and falls good as for Jatoria Willis, the grad student. So Willis gets her first two of the ball game. Better start for her in this ball game, although she finished with 16 points and six rebounds on Wednesday. Started slow in Wednesday's contest. Last time these teams met, she had 14 points and eight rebounds, almost getting a double-double in that ball game in January. Early on, tied at two each. Central State, the end of the floor. Lorene Ture behind the arc with the jumper. Shot was actually taken by Layla Turner, but Turner is off the mark. Here comes Bolin, trying to push it up the floor and led Willis too far. Head coach for the Lady Marauders of Central State, Kathy Parsons, she's in her third year. Trelane Powell, fourth year for the Tigerettes of Tuskegee. Tuskegee 21 and three overall and 18 and zero in conference play, already have crunched the number one spot in the West in the tournament. There's a save, but it goes right over to Ture. Good effort there in the backcourt by McElroy. Ture quickly up the floor. Tried to dump it in the corner, and Bolin took it away. Brittany Dugitoria up the floor now. Norman McKee led too far under the basket, and Tuskegee can't convert that transition. Peterson all the way at the block. Basketball tapped out of bounds by the Tigerettes. Tuskegee coming into this ball game, averaging 73.3 points per ball game. And the Lady Marauders at 71.4 points per outing. Entry pass down in the corner. Turner got a good look this time, and she's able to convert that one. Missed on a previous attempt, but there she's good for Central State. They take a 4-2 lead. McElroy, right side, Willis, underneath the defense, got it to the rack and the lay-in. Good lead pass there by Ariel and Willis. Both baskets for the Tigerettes early on in this basketball game. Still there to midcourt. Here comes Brittany left side. Bolin got the lay-in, and Tuskegee gets the lead, 6-4. Brittany had 10, 16 points, 10 rebounds, a double-double on Wednesday against the Lady Dragons, and a whistle and a travel violation against the Lady Marauders. Last time these teams met, Central State committed 30 turnovers. And those turnovers led to 33 points for Tuskegee off of those turnovers. 6-4 lead, Tigerettes, foul line extended. This is Jackson, whistles, and an elbow out front. Deshante Miller, the sophomore, commits the foul as Jackson was squaring near the free throw line. Entry pass. Jackson's got some space, and the lefty knocks it down for the Tigerettes, her first basket to the ball game. Tuskegee by four now, 8-4 over Central State. 
This is Turner. Across the floor, she comes with the pass to Nash. Nash squares for three. Rattled it, but she missed. There's Jackson for her first rebound of the basketball game. Leads the team in that area, averaging 9.8 per ball game. And Tuskegee turns it over. Tigerettes at 18 turnovers per ball game, forcing 26 plus out of opponents over the course of the season. Miller, front court, now up top. This is Peterson, front of the iron on her shot. Jackson clears another rebound. Two trips down the floor, two Camerons for her. Quickly, this is Bolin behind the arc. Brittany thought three, goes out front McElroy. They push it in the corner. Thurman McKee on the push. Lay in right side, nicely done there by Nadia. She used all of the backboard that time, coming from one side to the other. Just a beautiful play by Nadia down at the baseline. She found the lane, went across the floor and got the reverse lay-in. Foul called in the backcourt on Tuskegee. I think they got Nadia at the mid-stripe for the foul. 10-5, Tuskegee leads as the Lady Marauders throw it away. For substitution coming into the basketball game, the Lady Marauders send Katarina Maros, the sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Michael Roy had it picked there near the mid-strike. Right side with a jumper off the mark by Nash. McElroy comes away with the basketball. Four on one now. Bounce pass left side. Thorman McKee can't convert, but there's Jackson backside for the pickup and the lay-in. Tigerettes with numbers that time. Whistles there at the mid-stripe. And they're going to call a blocking foul there. Nadia set to take that charge near midcourt. She's still down on the surface. Took a hard foul there. And she's slow to get up after that one. Saw her do that a couple of times on Wednesday night where she got set early and got the charge call. But there, this time it goes against her. Half court set for the Lady Marauders. Sent Tuskegee with the lead. Jasmine, Jasmine Manuel set to come in next dead ball for Coach Powell. And the Tigerettes. Peterson pushes hard right side, got some space, missed on the rimmer, put back to the cylinder. That's off the mark. Jackson finally got a hand on it, and we're going back the other way. Kaylin Nash, the sophomore, had it down low for Central State, just not able to convert on the shot just in front of the cylinder. So we come to our first timeout here in Chappie James Center. 4.57 remains first half, and the timeout comes with Tuskegee leading it. 12-4 over the Lady Marauders of Central State. Take a break here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. There's something to do every single day, especially homecoming. It's insane on, on game day. Everybody was having a great time. The students were out in the shed cheering on the football team. So it also made me really um, excited about joining the Marcher Crips and Piper Band because they are another support system for the football team. The band also plays for the volleyball team. Sometimes you go to the baseball and softball team games as well. It is very easy to get involved here at Tuskegee University. There are so many student organizations, whether that's um, student Government Association, the choir, you have clubs within your colleges. There's literally a place for everybody here at Tuskegee University. Tuskegee is a very diverse campus. Even though Tuskegee University is a historically black college, we have different races, different cultures from the students to the faculty. Tuskegee University molds its students into great leaders. We learn how should we look in corporate America, how should we speak. The Tigerettes at Tuskegee, that's Manuel, left side, got a pass out front from McElroy for the lay-in. So Tuskegee, after the timeout, converts a basket, still in the backcourt by Willis, and Willis to the rack, left side for the lay-in. Pressure in the backcourt, just relentless by the Tigerettes right now. Nash, or Turner that is, in the right corner for the Lady Marauders, doubled there. Bounced out of bounds, hard, just in front of the Tuskegee bench. Boland and Jackson converging there. They'll get a Shiloh for the foul just in front of their bench. 
It's only her first. Peterson handles out front for the Lady Marauders. Now they go back across the floor to Nash. Doubled at the block, got a shot airborne. Tapped around, Jackson had a hand on it, but a Shiloh can't hang on to it. It'll stay with Central State. They'll have 10 to shoot. Turner in the corner, now works the paint. Runner across the paint, she missed. Rebound and a put back on the left side to Ray, the senior, with the basket, and she drew a foul. They call the foul on Jasmine Manuel, the sophomore from St. Louis, who's just on the floor for Coach Powell. Naomi Short's out on the floor now for the Lady Marauders, as is Sierra Hardy. One other Lady Marauder out on the floor. Make out her number momentarily. And that is Nadia McCown. So the free throw is good. Make it 16-7 Tuskegee with the lead and the basketball. Ranging right side is Bolin. Behind the arc, had a chance at a three. Couldn't get that basketball to her hand. It taps and fire. Jackson had it tapped away by Maros. And back the other way comes Central State. Good defensive work by Maros, the sophomore for the Lady Marauders to take that one away from Ashila. So Central State in a half court set with 3.43 remaining in this first quarter. This is Hardy up top. Now she pushes back out to McCowan. And McCowan with some space and she knocks it down. So McCown with her first points of the ball game. And they cut the Tuskegee lead to six. Ball on extended is Bowden. Now McElroy drains the three for the Tigerettes out front. McElroy, 31% shooting from behind the arc. Good look there. Inside the paint, basketball batted around. It will come clear to McCown. McCown with another three-pointer from out front. So McCown coming off the bench, paying dividends for the Lady Marauders early on. Back the other way, jumper in the corner off the mark there by Willis. Rebound to Central State, three on three basketball now. They'll give it to McCown, she'll take another three and the same result, boy. She has come on the floor and just lit it up from behind the arc, three trips down the floor, nine points for her. Right corner, Willis trying to answer. Line drive on the jumper. That one's off the mark. Manuel got the rebound, but she can't hang on to it. Here comes Central State. Hardy down in the corner to Shorts. Now McCown again. Finally misses one here in Chappie James. Had a good square look there. Just not able to put it down. Tuskegee by three with the basketball. We approach two minutes left first quarter. McElroy surveys. Now Willis right side. Heard Coach Powell saying that this team matches up with Tuskegee very well. But they're going to have to do more matching up on McElroy. They leave her with that kind of space. She's going to make them pay, and she does there. Knock down the three-pointer. Up the floor come the Lady Marauders. Hardy doubled in the corner. Got it on the turn to Shorts. Whistles on her jumper. They'll call that on Victoria Willis. And that's her second, or her first to Jackson. And that she's, that she made contact with Shorts as she was taking that jumper out front. Take a look at it coming up behind the back of that play. Trying to block that basketball, but going across the arms of Shorts. So that time, Victoria's arms were too short to box and get that block. And that will send Naomi Shorts to the line. Shorts with the free throw. Make it 22-18. 
McElroy to Jackson. Jackson at the block. Willis kicks back to Bolin. On the weave, McElroy. She's free. Thought about the three. Couldn't pull the trigger. Jackson foul on extended. She will pull it, and she will drain it for the Tigerettes. It's favorite area on the floor there for a shot right at that free throw line. Pressure in the backcourt as McCown handles. They go down in the corner now. This is Jones on a reverse. Missed on the shot. Rebound. Ashayla. Ashayla for Tuskegee. They go up the floor. Willis behind the defense. Jatorius inside the paint. Can't get it to fall. And we go back the other way. They're going to call that foul on Aaliyah Austin, the sophomore. Aaliyah got out on the floor for Coach Powell a few seconds ago. She and Maros were tied up for that basketball. And now they're going to switch it and say it was Maros that was guilty of the foul. Looked like that down low that uh, Ashela, uh, uh, Alea had the positioning on the inside. So they make the correct call there, and Tuskegee with it. Foul on extended. Jackson again, same results. Good look there for Ashila. Back-to-back field goals under a minute left. Steal in the backcourt. Willis right side to the rack. Spinner will not stay down for her as McCown has it in the backcourt. She'll be bumped there as McElroy trying to catch up with that play in the backcourt. 26 seconds left in this first quarter. Ariel probably not the best decision there to try to make something happen there in the backcourt. With a 28-16 lead, commits that foul on the bump. So McCall now will be at the line shooting for the Lady Marauders. And she knocks down the first. Very impressive player for the Lady Marauders thus far. The freshman only averaging 2.3 points per ball game. She likes what she's seeing here in Chappie James in terms of the rims. He's really kept them into this ball game. The three three-pointers, all of those back to back to back. There was a lane violation on that free throw, so the basketball over to Tuskegee. McElroy up the floor to Willis. 19 left in the first half. Bolin behind the arc, top of the key. They push it inside to Oshila. Jump shot left side. Spinner off the mark. McCown backside rebound for the Lady Marauders. They can play for a final shot in this first period. Get it out front on a whistle. Travel violation there on Hardy. So Tuskegee with 2.1 left after the turnover. They can hoist it toward the cylinder. Lead it 26-19. Up the floor. Jackson got some time. Got a good look. Banked it. Banks not open on Saturday. So Tuskegee, 26-19. They lead it at the end of the first period of play here from the Chappie James Center. Tuskegee University National Athletic Association is a proud sponsor of our broadcast coverage of Golden Tigers basketball. To find out how you can join this elite group of supporters of Tuskegee University Athletics, visit the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association website at www.tuskegee.edu forward slash T-U-N-A-A. Tuna. That's tuskegee.edu forward slash T-U-N-A-A. On the floor, Tuskegee leading it at the break 26-19. We thank Tuna for its coverage of support of our coverage. We'll take a break here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Are you looking for education that leads to career success and something more? We are Tuskegee University, hey. one of the nation's top-ranked HBCUs. We believe in education. Oh, they haven't given us a sheet yet. Okay. And you okay. work hard because you dream harder. By pursuing your purpose, you will make a difference. Are you ready for something big? Let's get started. Back live inside the Chappie James Center. Tuskegee, 26-19 lead. Samaya Abdur-Rahim up front to Willis. She's just on the floor, a sophomore. Jumper in the corner. Bolin took a look at it, not able to collect on it. Basketball's loose on the floor. Abdur-Rahim diving for it. It'll come clear, though, to Hardy and the Lady Marauders. 
Out front, McCown, the spinner. This one's off the mark. Half court set, Bolet, another look. Behind the arc, can't find the range. McCown got the rebound for Central State. Half court set, Morose handles in the paint, banked it left side, nicely done. Carolina Morose, the sophomore, with her first points of the ball game. Abdul Rahim down in the corner, bowling again with the jumper. Can't find the range yet, but the rebound and the putback. Aliyah Austin with the good positioning inside the paint, and she got the basket. Austin coming off the bench in the ball game on Wednesday. Nine points, had five rebounds in that ball game. A big factor for the Tigerettes in their comeback. Trailed by as many as 14 in the ball game. As there, just sliding past the block out of Abdul Rahim was Hardy, and she just slid by, got the rebound, and an easy lay-in. Willis, left corner, slides to the paint, to the rack, drew a foul. Tiger at to Tuskegee and wins this ball game. Incredible 58% shooting from the floor in the second half, which they needed all of that to come back and win that basketball game. 21 of 36 shooting from the floor in the in the final 20 minutes of the ball game. Shana Jackson, double-double for her. 12 points, 10 rebounds. And Brittany Boland, 16 points, 10 rebounds for her in that ball game. Exciting finish for the Tigerettes on Wednesday. Trying to see if they can do something a little less dramatic here this afternoon and come away with a win. Willis missed on the second free throw. Eight minutes, 18 seconds left, first half. Tuskegee leads it 29-23. Central State with the basketball. Turner inside the paint, shot, and the rebound comes clear to Jackson and Tuskegee. Boland surveys, zone defense there by the Lady Marauders. Abdul Rahim in the corner, and a whistle as she got the shot airborne. Abdul Rahim in Wednesday's ball game, eight points, one rebounds, two assists, three steals in the Tuskegee win over Lane in that makeup ball game that was scheduled for earlier in the year. Abdul Rahim at the line, the junior from Grand Perry, Texas. Remmer falls good for the first free throw. Tuskegee, 24th in the nation in the most recent Women's Basketball Coaches Association poll, and seventh in Division II of the South Region. Abdul Rahim collects both free throws for Tuskegee. And a steal in the backcourt by Willis. Jatoria, you heard Coach Powell reference the fact that she just always has her hands up and active and just comes away with so many steals to lead to transition baskets for Tuskegee. And got one there, a half court set in the backcourt. Whistles inside. Late whistle there, but a call against Willis for the foul. So Willis with her second. Officiating crew for this afternoon's ball game. Whitney Niles is a crew chief. She is handling the basketball for the inbound play underneath the cylinder. She's joined by Q Spearman and Ron Adams with the play call in terms of officiating this afternoon's ball game. Reminder now, men's action to follow on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Five-second violation there. Good defensive work by the Tigerettes on the entry pass, trying to deny it to Central State. here this afternoon and back on Monday for the final home game of the season for both the men and women as Abdur Rahim penetrates right side. Monday night will be senior night and will be some special, special recognitions for the seniors for both the women and men's team and likely the senior cheerleaders as well. So make sure you make your plans to come here on campus if you are able to salute these seniors from Tuskegee University, and if you cannot, we'll have the coverage for you here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Well, again, I want to thank uh, the Tuskegee University National Athletic, Alumni, Athletic Association for 
being a sponsor of our coverage of Tuskegee basketball. They do so much for Tuskegee in general in terms of the athletics program. We will have a chance to talk to one of the members of Tuna at halftime. So Palmer, Palmer Sullins caught up with him early in the week. And you'll be intrigued to hear some of the things that Tuna is doing or has done and uh, where that organization is going, just looking for some people to join them in their effort to continue supporting Tuskegee Athletics. Half court set for the Lady Marauders. Ture to inbound it, got it in the back court to Abigail Peterson who got back out on the floor. They try to stretch it in the paint, they got the pass down low to Miller, to the rack and Miller got the lay in. We approach seven minutes remaining first half. Jackson, foul line extended, left side, challenge there, missed on the shot, but the rebound back side to Austin. Aaliyah missed, Ops, the opposite side, rebound to Jackson, and she's tied up, and they call a foul. They'll call it on Layla Crispin. Crispin. So Crispin with her first. And it'll be Abdul Rahim to inbound it. Pushes to Jackson near the foul line. Went right back inside to Abdul Rahim, who was doubled there. Basketball tapped out of bounds over to Central State. So Ashila just trying to do a little quick touch pass back to Abdul Rahim, who stepped back on a play, play surface play, and uh, it's not able to convert on the pass. So the Central State Lady Marauders will have it on their end of the floor. Peterson directs traffic right side. They are trying to work it down low to Miller. They got it to her in the lane, double there, whistles, and a three-second violation. Good collapsing defense there by the Tigerettes on the inside. Just denying space for Miller to even find the footwork to move toward the basket. Abdul Rahim, half-court set. Right side, pushed all the way through, nicely done, just did not finish. It'll stay with Tuskegee on there into the floor. Zemaya with a good hard move right side. Just not able to convert on the lay-in. Perhaps did not think she was going to be that alone when she made the cut to the right side. Willis, she'll handle right side, lead behind for Abdul Rahim. Squares, fires a three, missed on the shot. Jackson flew for it, but she missed. Rebound to Turner. Peterson right side for Central State. Turner with the jumper. Air ball. And we go back the other way. Five fifty-one remains. First half of play. Muskegee beat Central State on January 9th. Up in Wilberforce. 66-55 winners in that ball game. 66-56 in that contest. And lead it by 10 here. Willis circles arc right side. Now on the push at the baseline. All the way through on the reverse lay-in. Missed on the shot. Shot that one backwards toward the cylinder. Over her head. Not able to convert. Right side behind the arc. Hardy fires a three-pointer. And Austin clears that for the Tigerettes. And Austin with five rebounds in Wednesday's ball game. Good effort that trip down the floor. Abdul Rahim, half court set. Wallace pushes. McElroy, Jackson. Jackson banked it, but she missed. Austin kept it alive on the inside to the center. Falls forward with the rotation of the basketball. It goes good. And Aliyah is going to the line. So her fortune's continuing after the outstanding performance on Wednesday. Good first half of action for her here on this Saturday afternoon. Just got that forward roll on the basketball. And the line drive free throws off the mark. 37-25 after the basket inside by Aliyah Austin. We're under five minutes left, first half. Across the paint now, sliding in the inside. Shots off the mark by Catherine Jones, a sophomore, and a whistle. 
think it may have been a foul on the Tiger Reds, but we'll find out who committed it after this timeout. 4.44 remains first half. Tuskegee with a 37-25 lead over the Lady Marauders of Central State. More basketball coming your way on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors, and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. Back live inside the Chappie James Center before play resumes. Had a chance to meet Lieutenant Colonel Retired Air Force William Mathis before the ball game. Came up and gave us a high five, saying that he enjoys listening to and watching our coverage of Tuskegee University basketball on the Golden Tigers Network. He's with the Tuskegee Alumni Club of Shelby County, Alabama. If you agree with the Colonel, good time to chime in by texting or leaving an email for Athletics Director Reginald Ruff and give him a high five for creating this Golden Tiger Sports Network as a way of covering, expanding the coverage of Tuskegee Athletics into basketball. Also give a high five to the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association for their support of the broadcast as well. Turnover and a half court set for Tuskegee. Back the other way. Oh, good recovery down at the block by Jackson. Free and Hardy thought she was uncontested for a lay in right side. But a hustling a shot of Jackson got down the length of the floor to knock that basketball away. Whistles got an offensive foul on the inside. Ashanti Miller, the sophomore, trying to create some space in there. And we go back the other way with Tuskegee handling the basketball. You see there Miller clearing out two Tigerettes on that play. Austin and Abdul Rahim taking a fall. Miller at six feet, solidly built. As Austin handles on the half-court set now for Tuskegee. Abdul Rahim pushes the floater inside the paint. Can't get at the fall. And there's Austin with another second chance opportunity for Tuskegee with a rebound. Jackson shot it hard right side. Good job there by Aaliyah Austin. Just commanding more floor time from Coach Powell because of the outstanding work she's doing. McCown foul on extended the jumper. She has gone cold now for the Lady Marauders after hitting her first three field goals. And all three were three pointers. McElroy across the timeline now almost threw it out of bounds at the block Jackson on Miller leans back with the jumper that's her spot on the floor this one she left short up the floor comes Hardy right side pushes back out front shorts Hardy slides all the way through at the baseline It looks like we're going to go back the other way as Deshante Miller inside the paint. Going to be hit with another personal on the inside. Looks like as she was trying to set a screen on the inside, she's picked up her third, and she will have to go to that Central State bench for a while with 3.08 remaining in this first half of play. Early foul trouble, trouble for Miller. Abdurrahim out front. Central State dropping into that zone. McElroy out front now. 11 to shoot for the Tigerettes. Austin's got position on the inside. Drop back step across the floor. Abdul Rahim, Cox Ames fires and drains it for the Tigerettes. They worked that basketball well in that half court set and found the open woman for the basket. Still in the backcourt, Jackson. Jackson taking it right side for the lay in. 23 left first half and whistles back the other way. They'll call Abdul Rahim for the foul, for the foul there. Tripping violation. 2.22 left first half. 
as Ashley Primus, the junior from Detroit, Michigan, comes out on the floor for Coach Powell and Tuskegee, Aaliyah Austin to the bench and gets high fives as she walks to the other end. Great job for her. McCown, Jackson guarding, almost took it away. Went for it another time. Foul line extended with the jumper. The shot was left short by Christman, but they get a put back on the inside by Hardy. Entry pass tripled on the inside that time, which Primus. And a whistle. They will call the foul on Nadia McCown. And that'll send Ashley Primus, the junior, to the line for Tuskegee. Primus only averaging about four minutes per ball game for Tuskegee over the course of the season. So getting a chance for some early play here on this Saturday afternoon as she hits the first free throw. One of two from the free throw line coming into the ball game. Got the first one. And the lefty knocks them both down from the line. 44-27 the lead for the Tigerettes. Tuskegee trying to push their conference mark to a perfect 19-0. Jumper good in the corner and a whistle. Nice job there of composure by Catherine Jones, a sophomore with a jumper with pressure. And then they'll call the foul on Primus. So Primus, number 14, fouls number 14, Jones. Primus on the other end of the floor with two free throws. And after the free throw here by Jones, she converts on a three-point play. TU by 14 now, 44-30. Raheem handles, entry pass at the block, Primus. Ashley spins in the paint, doubled, got it to the rack, but missed on the shot. Good converging down low by the Lady Marauders. McCown pushes left side and a whistle on the play. Jones got happy feet. They got her for the travel. Trying to make that cut to the lane and start it too quickly. Quick reminder that Colonel Palmer Sullins from the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association will be joining us through a remote interview. Got a chance to catch up with him during the middle of the week as McElroy catches up with the cylinder there from out front with a three-pointer. Still near the mid-stripe. Here comes Abdul Rahim down at the block. Willis, McElroy, another three, same result. Dings it in the corner. She's getting on fire here. Last couple of trips. Six points for her. Two three-pointers. Backcourt pressure again. Hardy handles. They go across the floor. This is Jones. Missed on the shot. Rebound at the block. And the basket's good down low by Crispin. Tigerettes that trip down the floor did not want to foul her since she had that inside position and a clear look at the cylinder. So just kind of relented and gave her that basket, uncontested. Final shot of the first half, Abdul Rahim right side all the way through to the rack, tried to bank it there, missed on the shot. It's loose on the floor with five seconds remaining. Tuskegee almost took it away, but Chrisman in the backcourt and that is likely where we're going to end this first half of play. Had a whistle there, but that kind of coincided right with the buzzer. So, the Tigerettes of Tuskegee, 18-point lead, headed into the locker room 50-32 to 32 over the Lady Marauders of Central State. We'll take a timeout. More basketball action coming your way on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Home, where you hang out with friends, do homework, relax, explore, where you can be yourself. Come home to Tuskegee University. Get the education that changes lives, including your own.
and welcome Colonel Sullen. So glad you could join us on the broadcast today and glad to have you here to come in and talk to us a little bit about the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association. I know you are first vice chairman for membership, so probably nobody better within the organization to talk to the fans about tuna than you and how important membership is. So let's back up a little bit and start by talking about the history of tuna and what it was originally founded for. Well, thank you so much for the invita invitation and opportunity to, to talk to you and to talk to uh, our alumni and those on the broadcast today. The tuna was initially uh, the brainchild of three individuals uh, that uh, were football and baseball, the athletes at Tuskegee, uh, Dr. Hugh Ogletree, uh, Mr. Harold Williams, and Mr. Jim, James Jimmy Carter. Uh, they wanted to see the athletic program recognize uh, the past athletes as well as do some things for the present program. And so they put their heads together and uh, put a coalition of, of uh, athletes as well as a coalition of those who were interested, alumni and, and students. And uh, so they came together to uh, start this program that's now known as TUNA. And uh, TUNA is the official uh, athletic uh, organization that represents the athletic programs at Tuskegee University. Uh, and uh, we have over the years uh, done what we could to uh, augment the programs and the, um, the uh, programs and activities that the athletic program overall was about, not just football, not just baseball, but all athletics, not just men's athletics, but women's also, all the athletic programs on, on the campus. And so we've evolved today, all the way today, to uh, continue that under the present administration uh, and of course working with the athletic director as well as uh, the uh, administration, current administration, Dr. Morris and, and her staff uh, in making sure that the word gets out to the alumni, to uh, athletes, former athletes, to those athletes that will become alumni in the future, uh, and those who are just interested in the success of Tuskegee uh, University and its athletic programs, which, as you know, has a lot of history uh, and goes way back as far as a successful program in, uh, with, with uh, wins and, and, and history. I'm glad to hear you say a couple things there, Colonel Sarlins, that really chime in. And first, we have to really backpedal and thank you and Tuna for joining us as one of our sponsors of the broadcast coverage of Tuskegee basketball. Uh, to your point about the organization being encompassing to uncover all the sports offered at Tuskegee, this is a prime example of it. We cover the women's basketball program just as we do the men, and the effort of TUNA really is shining and making this possible that we are able to bring the broadcast to not only the alums of Tuskegee, but fans of basketball across the world, in fact, with the stream. So first of all, thank you and the organization for supporting us on the broadcast. And as you were talking about the, the, the organization and its, it, its enveloping approach to helping all the programs at Tuskegee University. Talk a little bit about some of the initiatives that you all have. I know we talked about it off air a few days ago that one of the focus points that you have is for those student athletes who have exhausted eligibility, but still may need some help in terms of finishing matriculating at Tuskegee. That, that's absolutely right, um, Sawoy. We uh, have a, developed a scholarship called the Atlanta Spencer uh, Scholarship, which is designed to take those students who have uh, spent their time as athletes at Tuskegee University and uh, no longer are qualified to uh, get the benefits of the scholarships that they came there for. And so we do what we can to assist them in um, make, making sure that they are el eligible and able to finish school. Uh, timely. We talked about too was just the idea with 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 the association being such a pillar behind the athletics department that uh, 
you understand that obviously because you are first vice chair and a member of tuna but talk to the individuals out there who may be on the offense of thinking about okay why do i need and then in the case of an alum who may be asking okay i'm already a member of the tuskegee national alumni association why should i dial it down even further to deal with athletics talk a little bit about why it's important for people to give that that additional thought process and then join the athletic association the athletic program in, in Tuskegee has, has been a pillar of uh, the history. And with that said, there have been many thousands of athletes that have chosen Tuskegee because of the history that the athletic program has uh, offered to, uh, to uh, the, the world. And uh, many uh, noted athletes have, have come out and become successful in, in, in all areas of, of uh, life uh, outside of uh, athletics, but at the same time, it's very important uh, that our organization uh, takes on a role to give our athletes and our students alumni and our uh, alumni uh, parents and those who are interested some type of platform to come together as a coalition to assist the needs of uh, the athletic programs as a whole. And so that's our purpose to, to do just that, bring people together. And I want to dial into it just a little bit more based upon your comments, because I, th I think it's important that I hear you saying that anybody can join the athletic association that has any affinity to Tuskegee at all. But one of the areas of concentration for you and the organization is to really reach back and identify former athletes from Tuskegee parents of athletes or students that attend Tuskegee and did attend in the past for them to really give it strong consideration because of their nexus to Tuskegee athletics. Is that uh, correct? That, that is correct. And also for them to understand that what we try to do is, is make sure that we uh, work with the university to uh, see what their needs are today uh, and going forward. And just to give you an idea of some of the things that we've done for the uh, university in the past as an organization. Uh, the Alumni Bowl, which is the, the stadium, uh, Cleve Albert Stadium now, uh, the uh, public address system there was, was really in, in bad shape until Tuna stepped on board a few years ago. Uh, the Gator uh, utility vehicles we purchased for them, the baseball scoring uh, board, uh, infield, outfield surface uh, that we did, uh, and the dugout restorations, uh, the Chappie James Arena uh, scoring table at, at the uh, basketball court, uh, the flooring, resurfacing the flooring. The floor that's down there now is one that was replaced by Tuna uh, because the old floor had become uh, unplayable and, and unusable. Softball field scoreboard replacements, student athletes, tuition assistance programs we talked about, and, and just uh, the locker room upgrade, of course, that locker room's gone now. The AD, uh, Mr. Ruffin, is uh, instrumental in putting together a beautiful facility down and replace the, the one that was there before. But we dug in our heels with them when they were struggling to um, make sure that those athletes had some place to uh, change. Perfect comment there. And I was on the campus just a couple of days ago prior to a, a women's basketball game and got a chance to see almost all the facilities you you just ran off in terms of the support from Tuna was there. They had a baseball game going earlier that day, saw what you were talking about there. And obviously down at the at the football field and even inside of Chappie James, just an outstanding level of support that you all have given to athletics. So we're not talking about competition between joining the Athletics Association and anybody that's already a member of the Alumni Association. This is just another arm of being able to give back to Tuskegee. And you all are doing a tremendous job with that, Colonel Sullivan. Just want to take our hats off to you for that. But as we think about, uh, talk about maybe wrapping up the interview in just a few seconds, just want to give you an opportunity to give people out there uh, information about how they can become a member of TUNA. Tuna has a, a website in conjunction with the university, and we, we are, everything that we do is on behalf of the university to include donations that come in. Uh, they go to Tuskegee University. And if you wrote a check, it would be for, to Tuskegee University. And uh, in the memo section, you put Tuna. 
but we do we are recognized on the web, on the uh, website Tuskegee University website and you go to www.tuskegee.edu forward slash tuna and uh, there's information there uh, even about our walkway our athletics wa legacy walkway which was uh, implemented about in, in uh, 2015 in an effort to uh, augment uh, or uh, to generate funds that uh, athletes and, and those who uh, non-athletes that would like to uh, help us with that athletic legacy uh, could purchase bricks. And so that program is offered on that website, but www.tuskegee.edu forward slash tuna is a good way to, to start that, uh, that process. And our membership is, uh, well, we ask for a donation of $100 of basic membership, but certainly there are levels of membership that uh, are higher than that. And we appreciate those higher levels because that we can do more with what we get in. And there are also, I don't want to put you on the spot on this, but there are also some additional benefits for people who join TUNA, like maybe just particular seating or a, a ticket opportunities in terms of football games and even at some of the basketball games. Anything you want to chime in on there? Because, you know, people like to hear what the added levels of joining may be. Just a quick reference to that. Uh, yes, there are uh, tickets that uh, are offered uh, at different levels for uh, different levels of uh, membership. And certainly uh, the big process we look for is a platform to give back to Tuskegee. That's the main thing. And that is the biggest, biggest benefit that we offer for uh, all of the members and to come back and support the Tuskegee Athletics Program. Colonel, I know you are, we're doing this remote and you are away from the city, but we got big, big basketball action going on today. And into Monday as Tuskegee's wrapping up its season in terms of basketball. Again, we thank you all for being one of our broadcast supporters, but as an Atit Tuskegee alum, I know you're keeping a close eye on both the women and men. They are both right there with a chance to come in seated number one into the SIAC tournament. So the excitement and the legacy of Tuskegee athletics and its success even continues to this day and even with basketball. So thank you for being a part of our support again. You're certainly welcome. And your remote broadcast, uh, or it really helps us that can't get there to be yeah. right there. <laughs> Colonel Palmer Sullins, the first vice chairman of membership for TUNA, the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association, kind enough to join us remotely for the broadcast. Colonel, thanks so much, and we'll see you soon. So Tuskegee University is not just a place where I'm earning my degree. I'm learning how to be bold. And I've actually gotten that feedback from previous internships. Tuskegee has definitely helped me increase my leadership skills. Tuskegee pride is one of the biggest takeaways you get from the university. Um, not only are you getting a degree when you come here, but you're also going to get that pride for yourself. It's going to encourage you to excel even more and also just reach places that you've never reached before. I love being at a small school especially um, in the engineering classroom. I actually have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my professors. They don't hesitate to take 20 to 30 minutes to explain something again. The most valuable thing that Tuskegee students leave the university with, besides a great education, is definitely a family. Tuskegee is lovingly called Mother Tuskegee because she's like a mother. It's not easy at all times, but like a mother, she's there to nurture you along the way, whether it be your professors, fellow students, the community, they're always there to nurture you and help you to succeed. My parents met here. They've been able to have lifelong careers with their education from Tuskegee. Everybody's willing to lend a helping hand. Um, if you need anything extra done, nobody is hesitant to get it done. And it's a place that I can literally call home for forever. Uh, the Chappie James Center. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Colonel Sullins with the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association. Very informative in terms of some of the things they've been doing and supporting TU Athletics. Hope you will seriously consider joining that elite group of supporters of Tuskegee Athletics. They are a proud supporter of our coverage of Tuskegee basketball. Can he set to start second half action at the break? Tuskegee 
46 shoot, 46% shoot, shooting from the floor, 19 of 41. From behind the arc, they were 42% shooting there, 5 of 12. Jackson had 10.6 rebounds, a shot of Jackson. And Ariel McElroy finished the first half with 12 points. All of her points coming from behind the arc. She went 4 of 5, shooting from behind the arc for Tuskegee. For the Lady Marauders of Central State, they shot 32% from the floor in the first 20 minutes, 12 of 37. 3 of 12 in terms of three-point shooting. They got three three-point baskets in that first half. All of those came by Nadia McCown when she first got on the floor, hit her first three field goals, all of them three-pointers. There she has it picked by Nadia Thorman McKee, and Nadia with a basket to start the second half for the Tigerettes of Tuskegee. Tuskegee with a 20-point lead now after that basket. Entry pass at the block. Hardy there, wide open. Breakdown in that Tigerette defense. That trip down the floor, no question. She was uncontested at the block. I also want to thank the Follett Bookstore here on the Tuskegee University campus. Making a apparel donation on Wednesday to the broadcast with a Tuskegee emblem tie, which I will proudly wear on senior night here on Monday. Tuskegee with the 52-34 lead. Assistant manager William Thomas there and store manager Deborah Blanton. Very generous in terms of making that contribution to our broadcast coverage. As Maros makes a contribution to the Lady Marauders of Central State, her second field goal of the ball game. Just a little short turn right side to the glass. She's got a soft touch for Central State. Bolin over to Willis. Down in the corner now, this is Michaela Malik. Malik, the junior from Houston, Texas, started the second half for Coach Powell and Tuskegee. They tie bodies up, and they're going back the other way towards Central State. Underneath that pile were Primus. Primus took the legs from under Naomi Shorts. And they get Hardy behind the defense for an easy lay-in. Tuskegee not real sure if they were doing the, that, knew that that bas basketball was getting ready to be set and play. They were just kind of lazily working it back down the floor. And here's another steal here by the Lady Marauders. And Hardy tries to go behind the back to avoid the defense and lost it there. Bolin pushes Willis. Willis at the block. Easy lay in left side by Primus. Tuskegee quick on the transition there. After the takeaway in the half court set, took it back the other way for an easy lay in. Tuskegee in full court pressure. Shorts handles, and a violation there. Good pressure in the backcourt by Bolin, Willis, and Malik. Billy Austin back out on the floor. Charlotte Jackson reporting back as well. Tuskegee with a 54-38 lead. 7.21 left in the third. Coach Powell trying some new personnel to start the second half. Did not want to get in jeopardy of letting that lead slip away, so she goes back with a couple of the starters. We'll certainly see some of the more reserved players as this basketball game continues to unfold if it stays the way that it is right now with Tuskegee with a lead. And at, a, at an area and a, a, a comfortable enough lead where Coach Powell is comfortable herself in terms of putting some other players out on the floor. Right side Jones all the way through the rack. Nice move. She missed on the shot. Basketball fought for Malik. Got it over to Austin. And Tuskegee back the other way. Willis pushes the bowling. Bolin got some space, tried to dump it in the corner to Austin. The whistles on the play on the penetration. Maros got too close, bumped Bolin. She'll pick up her third. So Michaela Malik, the junior, averaging about seven minutes per ball game overall in the course of the season. Jackson left side all the way through. Maros could not afford to foul her there. She just picked up a third, so Ashila got an easy push toward the basket for the lay-in. Jumper left side. This one's off the bark of a count. She hits the deck, and so does Malik. 
Willis pushes. Left it for Jackson, left side to the glass, and nicely done between the seniors. Willis with the assist, Jackson with the finish. Jackson with 14 in the ball game now. Full court pressure. Marauders push it down in the corner. This is Jones. Foul on extended McCown. He'll push it in the corner, Hardy. Now back up top, Shorts with the jumper, and she knocked it down for the Lady Marauders. So good ball movement. That trip down the floor for Central State. Brittany with the basketball for Tuskegee. Malik handles, works off a screen by Jackson. Bounce pass in traffic there and is turned over to the Lady Marauders. Seldom do you see that pass get clear when you're trying to hit a player on the move inside the paint. McCown to the rack, got a jumper right side. Jackson went for the steal and McCown made her pay for it with the jumper. So she's got 14 in the ball game. Willis circles up top. Bolin trying to get it to Austin. Aaliyah squares at the block, pushes back to Jackson, foul line extended. That's where she wants to be, and that's the result she wants. 16 for Ashila. Bolin tried to tap it away. Good effort. Hardy comes clear with it. McCown behind the arc. She'll fire from there. Back of the iron. Maros runs down the long rebound over to Shorts for three, and she found the range. They were 3 of 12 from behind the arc in the first 20 minutes of play. They've hit a couple of big threes here in the third. 60-46 Tuskegee leads. Bolin with the basketball. Inside Jackson. Ashila left side to the rack. She was fouled. A late whistle there, but a good call. McCown trying to catch up with that. She commits the foul, and Ashila will be going to the line for Tuskegee. But should be doing that after this media timeout here inside Chappie James Center. Tuskegee with a 60-46 lead. More Tiger Rats basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network after this timeout. Here at Tuskegee University, some of our historical figures like Booger T. Washington, George Washington Carver, those are some of the people that created or started that Tuskegee experience. This place is so, it's so different. You have a support system, a real support system. We may ball and parlay, but the most important thing we do is graduate. And after we graduate, we accelerate in everything we do. Back live here inside the Chappie James Center. Cheerleaders pumping the crowd up here on a Saturday afternoon. The Tuskegee University National Athletic Association is a proud sponsor of our broadcast coverage of Golden Tigers basketball. To find out how you can join this elite group of supporters of Tuskegee University Athletics, visit the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association website at www.tuskegee.edu forward slash T-U-N-A-A. -A. That's the Tuskegee.edu forward slash tuna, T-U-N-A-A. -A. And a thank you to Tuna for joining our list of sponsors of Tuskegee University Basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. So appreciative of them joining us. Jackson at the line, got the first free throw. 4-12 left in this third quarter. Ashila at the line, shooting two. She was fouled just before the timeout. And the lefty knocks them both down for Tuskegee. Tigerettes with one more basketball game remaining on the regular season. That'll take place here Monday night when they host the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. And it'll be senior night here at Tuskegee University. And some of the seniors from both squads, men and women, and the cheerleaders will be recognized here inside the facility. Jumper by Hardy missed on the shot. Jackson, a redshirt senior, clears for Tuskegee. If you have a chance, I encourage you to come out and support Tuskegee basketball and these seniors on Monday. And we'll be here with the coverage. Bolin got some space, pops the jumper, knocks it down for Tuskegee. 
Brittany just so quick on that release with her jump shot. Knock that one down for the Tigerettes to make it 864-46. Basketball tapped around and stolen by Malik. Good job by Michaela with that turnover. They dump it at the block. Jackson left side slides past the defense. Good recovery there backside on the block by Nash. She'll take it all the way inside. Austin trailing that play. And they will get Aaliyah Austin for the foul. So the sophomore picks up her first as you take a look at Nash coming back the other way. Well, she's got a, ball, a lot of ball there to Aaliyah. But the call will stand. She is kind of rubbing across her face after she made contact with the basketball. Nash shooting. Good from the free throw line for the Lady Marauders. 3.07 left in the third. Men's to action follow on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. They're coming in, maybe going to reset some time on the, sh on the clock here inside the arena. I think, yeah, on the uh, play clock, they didn't start it right at the time the basketball was in, inbounded for play. So right now they have 27 seconds on there, and that's what they're going to go with. Bowling in the backcourt. Short's trying to catch up with it. Brittany slips down but regains. Back of the baseline. They try to get it down to Malik. She was off balance trying to retrieve the pass and the turnover gets it to Central State. McCown missed on her runner right side. And Jackson clears for Tuskegee. Tuskegee ranked seventh. In Division II South Region, Bolin with another jumper. This one partially deflected by the Lady Marauders. Shorts wants to push up the floor to Hardy. Hardy to the rack, missed on the shot. Good effort there by Jutoria Willis, not giving up on that play to contest Hardy at the cylinder. Jackson, jumper, got it. Little crip jumper there, right side by Shyla. Probably hit that one in her sleep. Hardy, Nash. Bumped Austin to the glass, missed on the shot. Basketball tapped around. Nash comes clear with it. Inside, just lost it on the inside. And likely going to give this basketball to Central State, I believe. That's Crew Chief Whitney Niles is indicating that's a right call. As Nash got tied up on the inside, but the basketball going off of one of three Tigerettes inside the paint. So Michaela Malik takes a seat. Good job of minutes by her. Jumper, right corner on the inbound. That's nicely done as Turner, the sophomore, nails it for the Lady Marauders. They jump into full court pressure. Willis near the mid stripe. Out on the floor now for Tuskegee. Philly King, the sophomore. King from Snellville, Georgia. Sixteen points, fifteen rebounds for her over the course of the season. Again, a lot of these players don't see much plate of court time in ball games that are very close. And most of the regular starters and reservists get most of that time. But here, with a comfortable enough lead at sixteen, King on the floor. Tried to dump it down low to Austin. Got it there at the block. Good job by Aaliyah to get the basket. Worked underneath the cylinder. Worked through the defense for the lay-in. Shorts across the timeline. A minute 23 left third quarter. Short ranges right side. They left her alone. Good defensive effort by Willis. What we talked about earlier. Hands always active and got a block there. Willis left side. Try to dump it down low to Jackson. Then they turn it over. Sixty-four seconds left. First half. Shorts across the timeline. Tuskegee by eighteen. Top of the key. There's the jumper there by Crispin, and she knocked it down. Two for her. Crispin. 
Bowling out front for Tuskegee. 44 seconds remains first half. About a 20 second differential. Jackson foul on extended, got the jumper airborne, hit the front of the iron there. The rebound comes clear to Jones and Central State. Now about a three second differential between shot and game. Shorts inside the paint, circles back out. They left her alone for three. And Jackson clears the errant shot. So Tuskegee can play for the final shot here. Brittany Bolin, right hard push, bounce pass at the block. And stopping in the corner was Willis. Had she continued to the basket, basketball would have met her there near the cylinder, but she broke her path off to the basket. And back the other way, underneath, the spinner's off the mark. Bolin hoist at the buzzer, but that one's off the mark. So Tuskegee can't take advantage of the remaining seconds in this third quarter, but they do take advantage of some good shooting in the third, and they lead at 68-52 over the Lady Marauders of Central State. We'll take a timeout here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network and bring you the final quarter after the timeout. Will you hang out with friends? Do homework? Relax? Explore? Where you can be yourself? Come home to Tuskegee University. Get the education that changes lives, including your own. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Back live inside Chappie James Center. Ten minutes remaining in the women's contest. Tuskegee's men coming your way after this, hosting the Marauders of Central State, which Benji Taylor and the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee coming in. Uh, won their last two ball games against Spring Hill and Lamar Orange College. Golden Tigers at 18 and 7 overall and 13 and 5 in the SIAC. And depending on who you ask, they're either first or second in the West in the SIAC. They'll make the Marauders who come in at 5 and 19. Central State, number six in the West. Play resumes in this final quarter of action here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Glad you could join us. Charles Ward with the coverage along with the production team inside Chappie James. McElroy trying to bounce pass there, and they throw that one away. That had bad intentions from the start. The initial bounce pass by McElroy probably should have been stolen by the Lady Marauders. And then on the second attempt, they bounced it out of bounds, but fortunately went off of one of the Lady Marauders of Central State, so Tuskegee will keep it. Nadia Thorman McKee, right side. Abdul Rahim at the block. Out front now with the jumper. That one's off the mark. Missed the cylinder. Primus had a look. So it's Mahalroy, Primus, Thorman McKee, Abdul Rahim, and Jatoria Willis out on the floor for Coach Powell. This time of year, Basketball almost taken away by Tuskegee. Whistles on the inside. And it looks like we're going to have a blocking foul to go against Ashley Primus. Just going to make the point that in addition to Coach Powell trying to get other players into the lineup to give them on-court time, also at this stage of the season, looking at the tournament starting next weekend, you want to be careful about injuries. And if you get a comfortable enough lead, you at least want to make sure you don't have to have your your key players out there for so long. Abdul Rahim, her first shot blocked at the baseline by Nash, but she regains. Willis, back to Abdul Rahim. Free, pops a three, knocks it down in the corner. So the junior from Grand Prairie, Texas, knocked down that three-pointer there, 71-52. Back the other way with a jumper. That one's off the mark by Turner, but there sliding in for the putback is Layla Christman. McElroy in the backcourt. She'll be met at the midstripe by Jones. Over to Abdul Rahim. Good heart fake by Samaya. Jumper foul on extended off the mark. But Nadia Thorman McKee with the rebound. Missed on her put back. And finally Nash clears for Central State. Whistles travel violation. So the turnover by the Milady Marauders sends it back over to Tuskegee with 8.22 remaining. 
Tuskegee already clinched the number one seed for the West headed into the SIAC tournament, which will be coming your way next, starting next Saturday on the 25th from the campus of Savannah State University in, in Tiger Arena. Eight days of basketball action as well as Joff Jumper. Remember, stays good for her. Right now, the Tigerettes, as they get a steal in the backcourt, Willis is going to be free for an easy lay-in there. Three things stand out. Tuskegee women won't be in action until the quarterfinal round on Wednesday at 12 noon in Savannah. Jumper, good line drive shot by Turner. She finds the bottom of the net for the Lady Marauders. So if you're making your travel plans for the Tuskegee appearance in the tournament, that Wednesday at 12, the women will be act in action. Got to kind of wait and see which day the men play, but looks like it's going to be quarterfinal round for them as well, regardless of whether they finish one or two on the west side. Nash hoists a three-pointer, and Nash knocks down a deep one there for Central State. Abdul Rahim comes across the timeline. We're under seven minutes remaining in the basketball game. McElroy on the weave she handles. Tend to shoot now for Tuskegee. Abdul Rahim trying to dump it down low, just threw it right away to Chrisman. Running it left side to the rack is Shorts. Shorts missed on the lay-in, but Shields fouled and she will be going to the line for Central State. 6.36 left in the basketball game. And it looks like we're going the other way. They'll get shorts for the foul on the inside. So credit Tuskegee with a good block at the baseline. And they will have the basketball. Abdul Rahim in the backcourt. McElroy, deep three by McElroy, front of the iron. Rebound, Primus got in the fray for it and a whistle. They will call the foul on Kaylin Nash, the sophomore for Central State. So Nash picks up her third and it'll stay with the Tigerettes. Abdul Rahim looks to the inside, dumps it there to Primus. Ashley, floater, missed inside the paint. Peterson had it go between her legs, diving on the floor as Chrisman to save it. Jones with it, back to Chrisman, and they work it. Good passing on the inside as Chrisman got the lay-in. Five fifty left in the contest. Abdul Rahim works off a screen by Thorman McKee and a whistle. Abigail Peterson, the sophomore, trying to catch up with the quick-footed Abdul Rahim, and she commits the foul. 5.40 left in the ballgame. Tuskegee with a 75-62 lead over the Lady Marauders of Central State. Tuskegee trying to get their 19th win conference-wise on the season. The Tuskegee University National Athletic Association is a proud sponsor of our broadcast coverage of Golden Tigers basketball. To find out how you can join this elite group of supporters of Tuskegee University Athletics, visit the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association website at www.tuskegee.edu forward slash T-U-N-A-A. T-U-N-N-A, acronym for the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association. Tuna. Glad to have them on board as our sponsor. 540 remains in the ball game here. I hope you'll take an opportunity to check out that website and join in. Whether you are an alum of Tuskegee and you directly want to support the athletics program, a former athlete at Tuskegee, 
encourage you to join. Or if you're parents out there watching our coverage of this ball game, that's an excellent way for you to support Tuskegee Athletics by becoming a member of TUNA. 540 left. Brittany Bolin back out on the floor. She'll inbound the basketball. Michaela Malik back out as well. Jasmine Manuel as well. She'll spread the paint to the rack right side. Good job there by Jasmine. She beat Nash at the block. Whistles in the backcourt on a turnover there by Central State. So Tuskegee amped up the defense. That trip in the backcourt got a quick turnover. Brittany Bolin out front. Michaela regains that basketball. Up top, this is Philly King with the jumper. King spins it in the cylinder and it pops out of there. Rebound chased down by Shanti Brown, the senior who just got out on the floor. Philly King with a good look on the three-point effort. McCowan back out on the floor. The Lady Marauders, she'll replace Chrisman in their lineup. Good job by Chrisman in the second half for Coach Parson and the Lady Marauders. Jumper immediately on the entry pass. This is Malik and a three-pointer by Michaela Malik. So the junior from Houston on target. Back over in the back there by the Lady Marauders. Shorts tried to dip it back over to McCown who had not made it across the timing line yet. We're at the five-minute mark here inside the Chappie James Arena. Tuskegee with an 80-62 lead. We'll take a timeout here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Tuskegee with an 18 point lead, trying to push their way to their 19th conference win on the season with no losses and push their overall to 22 and three if they can hang on here with five minutes left in the ball game. Beat Central State early in the year in November by 10, 66-56 in that ball game. A little bit better effort here for Tuskegee in this contest so far. Still five minutes remaining though. King. Up top to Malik. On the weave, it's Bolin now. Bolin, back up top, Philly King. King, foul on extended, shot blocked there by Nash. Good defensive effort there. That'll turn to a break. Nash runs the floor right side, and, and the Lady Marauders finish that. Good job by them to create the turnover and get the basketball for the lay-in. Bolin in the backcourt, lost it. And Short's going to be guilty of the foul. Brittany. Lost the basketball just momentarily. He's trying to catch up with it and regain. As you see, Shorts jumping in her path and to block Brittany. So they get the foul on her. Tuskegee keeps the basketball. Manuel with a jumper right side inside the paint. She missed. McCallum didn't miss on the rebound. They go back the other way. Central State has it. McCown behind the arc, a whistle's there to get her for the travel. She thought she bounced that basketball before she took the step. Crew Chief. Whitney Niles doesn't agree with her assessment. And Tuskegee with the basketball. Bowling over to the junior Malik. Malik, right corner, and a whistle. Down low. They call the foul on McCown. She was scrapping for some position down low on Malik. And she commits the foul, or commits the foul on Ashante Brown. So Brown will be at the line shooting. Ashante registers her first points of the ball game. Came in 
one of two from the free throw line on the season. And a second free throw rolls forward for the senior. And she got them both. Shorts in the backcourt. Over to Nash. We go under four minutes remaining. Jumper out front. That was a rimmer off the mark by Turner. Manuel with the rebound for the Tigerettes. Up to Malik. Manuel tried to save it as it was tapped by the Lady Marauders, and they come back the other way with a four on two. Shorts fires the three. She left it short. Nash chases it down in the corner, got it clear to Peterson. Peterson floater at the rack is good. King up the floor, Brown got the lay in right side. So the senior, Shantae Brown, running the floor, got the lay in. Good pass there from Philly King on the lead. McCown pops a three, knocks it down. It's been a while since she's hit one, but she knocked that one down. She's got four three-pointers in the ball game for the Lady Marauders. As we approach three minutes left. Bolin out front. Entry pass, Jasmine. Double in there and a whistle. Call a foul there. McCown at the back of that play, and they will get her for the foul. She's got to be close to her fifth. That is her fifth personal, so that will close the book on her. She will lead the ball game, having hit four three-pointers for the Lady Marauders of Central State. That'll send Jasmine Manuel to the line for Tuskegee to shoot. Jasmine, a sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. Got the first free throw. We're at 2.54 left in the ball game. Turn our attention to men's basketball after this one's done. On our way to the Tigerettes, bouncing their season mark to 22 and three, and 19 and 0 in conference play. Be interesting to see after Monday's ball game where Tuskegee winds up in the regional rankings right now, number seven. You win your conference tournament, you automatically go to the division playoffs. Tuskegee right now, if they finish the season, maybe not winning the tournament, but ranked seventh in the division, they would get into division NC2A play by virtue of that if they stay at seven, but can't afford to lose because you never know what is on the mind of the voters who tally those rankings for Division Two. 243 left here at the line. It's the junior Michaela Malik shooting. And she missed on the second of two. Peterson back the other way. She will fire a three-pointer. That one's off the mark. Jatoria Willis back out on the floor, gets that rebound. Willis tried to dump it down low. She got it to Thurman McKee. Nadia inside and a whistle there. So with 2.27 left, Coach Powell going back with a couple of the key players with Ashada Jackson back out there, Nadia back out, as well as Jatoria. They join Shantae Brown and Michaela Malik as Nadia missed on the first of two. She goes one of two from the line as she collects on the second free throw. Peterson behind the arc again. This time she finds the range for the Lady Marauders. Make it 87-72 after the triple. Willis to Malik. Michaela, right side, short jumper, back of the iron. Nash clears as we go down to two minutes remaining in the ball game. Willis gave chase far side of the floor. Always hustling. This one will stay with the Lady Marauders. Michaela Malik takes a seat. Philly King back out on the floor. 
Shorts works it right side. Shot rejected by Willis inside the paint. King lost it in the backcourt. Peterson left side, missed on her lay-in. They fight for the rebound and we go back the other way. Tuskegee has it. It's King and Peterson were chasing it down. It went out of bounds off of Central State. Jatoria across the timeline. Nadia Thorman McKee misses on the three there. Jackson got a backside rebound though. The lefty with the putback, she missed. Now Nash finally clears for Central State. Peterson got behind the defense. She'll take the short jumper right side and knocks it down. Dangerous pass by King and it's taken away by the Lady Marauders. Shorts behind the arc, pumps the three. The spinner goes in the cylinder and out. But the rebound down at the block and a whistle as Deshante Miller fights it toward the cylinder. Miller, remember, got into that early foul trouble in the first half. Had to minimize her play in the second. And now out there with 66 seconds remaining. Beijing Zinnerman out on the floor now for the Lady Marauders. And Coach Carson just trying to get some players out there who have not played much for them during the course of the year. Spinner off the mark by Miller. And Jackson clears another rebound to add to her impressive stat sheet and rebounding. Willis pushes, ran right into Philly King inside the paint. A correction ran right into Shantae Brown. Jackson, jumper, whistles. Three second violation. Shante Brown was kind of standing there in the lane and never moved out of there. So Tuskegee on his way to his 19th conference win. Jump shot off the mark there by Turner. And the rebound clear to Ashante Brown. Tuskegee will have to take a shot here or, or a shot clock violation, about three seconds difference as Willis handles out front with eight to shoot. Philly King on the move, left side to the right, banked it home. So Philly King, the sophomore from Snellville gets a basket. Shorts, jumper, off the mark, and that'll do it. Tuskegee wins this one convincingly. 89-74 over the Lady Marauders of Central State. SIAC action, Tuskegee going to 19-0 in conference play. Already have clinched the number one seed in the West for the tournament. And they'll go to 22-3 overall after the win over the Lady Marauders of Central State. Central State falls to 10-14 overall and 8-9 and in SIAC play. Central State with a couple of ball games left on their schedule into next week. They meet Spring Hill and then a non-conference ball game against Bluefield State. For the Tigerettes of Tuskegee, they'll conclude the regular season here at Chappie James on Monday night when they meet the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. On this Saturday afternoon, the Tigerettes win it 89-74. We'll take a break, come back with post-game activities here on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. STEM careers are one of the fastest growing fields, yet women of color comprise less than 10% of the workforce within these high paying jobs. Tuskegee University is changing this. In 2018, we were awarded a grant from the National Science Foundation to develop computer science career awareness for young African American women. In 2019, we established the Campaign for Leadership and Excellence Scholarship. It provides future female engineers with financial support to pursue their educational goals. Today, Tuskegee continues to educate African American women in STEM fields, empowering them to pursue their chosen careers and providing the foundation they need to transform science, medicine, and technology. If a STEM career is in your future, explore what Tuskegee can offer you.
Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. There's something to do every single day, especially homecoming. It's insane on, on game day. Everybody was having a great time. The students were out in the shed cheering on the football team. So it also made me really um, excited about joining the March of Crimson Piper Band because they are another support system for the football team. The band also plays for the volleyball team. Sometimes we go to the baseball and softball team games as well. It is very easy to get involved here at Tuskegee University. There are so many student organizations, whether that's um, student Government Association, the choir, you have clubs within your colleges. There's literally a place for everybody here at Tuskegee University. Tuskegee is a very diverse campus. Even though Tuskegee University is a historically black college, we have different races, different cultures from the students to the faculty. Tuskegee University molds its students into great leaders. We learn how should we look in corporate America, how should we speak in corporate America, and things of that nature. We bring back people who work for um, major companies to kind of give you how they got there, what were their resources they utilized here at the university to get to their level as well. So Tuskegee University is not just a place where I'm earning my degree. I'm learning how to be bold. And I've actually gotten that feedback from previous internships. Tuskegee has definitely helped me increase my leadership skills. Tuskegee Pride is one of the biggest takeaways you get from the university. Um, not only are you getting a degree when you come here, but you're also going to get that pride for yourself. It's going to encourage you to excel even more and also just reach places that you've never reached before. I love being at a small school especially um, in the engineering classroom. I actually have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my professors. They don't hesitate to take 20 to 30 minutes to explain something again. The most valuable thing that Tuskegee students leave the university with, besides a great education, is definitely a family. Tuskegee is lovingly called Mother Tuskegee because she's like a mother. It's not easy at all times, but like a mother, she's there to nurture you along the way, whether it be your professors, fellow students, the community, they're always there to nurture you and help you to succeed. My parents met here. They've been able to have lifelong careers with their education from Tuskegee. Everybody's willing to lend a helping hand. Um, if you need anything extra done, nobody is hesitant to get it done. And it's a place that I can literally call home for forever. Tuskegee didn't start off as a big campus. It started off in a small shack in the back of a church. The focus was always to build the community up. We share in a culture together that um, is kind of hard to explain. You gotta live it, you gotta enjoy it. It's the HBCU experience. It's nothing short than, than beautiful. So my name is Dia Hunter. I am an assistant professor of construction management here at Tuskegee. Students make the institution special. You're gonna deal with students that are brilliant, students who have a mind for construction. They bring diverse backgrounds, diverse ways of life. I love sharing this with students. I love giving them the tools that they need in order to be great at it. Just because we're at HBCU doesn't mean our education is, is different. Don't get me wrong, we have different values and traditions and culture and things like that. So we're gonna have different outlooks, different understandings on things, and that makes for a better company is diverse minds. 
I am Kaylin Parm, a graduating senior, construction science and management major, hailing from the Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. And to be a part of Tuskegee University's construction science and management program is to be a part of history. In, in this field, I'm, I'm underrepresented. I'm a black woman, so obviously it's not gonna be a lot of people like me, and that's okay because we're still working for diversity, but the part that I would like to see more is the inclusion part. So yes, you have a black girl here and a, Asian guy there, but do they feel comfortable in this environment? Do they feel like they're actually a part of the team? Let's start with HBCUs and coming here and getting to know our students and our programs. You'll see that not only are we coming with the knowledge that you need us to have, but we also have some different perspectives you might not have. We have to give back. Everybody counts or nobody counts. And that's gotta be part of leadership. By Procore taking the lead on this scholarship program, and partnering with AGC as a Grand Slam home run. Well, I'm Bob Bowen, chairman and founder of Bowen Engineering. We can make a real difference in our industry, in our community, in our society. We're a better place to go than Tuskegee or the, or the other HBCUs. The Lifting the Veil of Ignorance statue represent Booker T. Washington telling all the slaves what they can be in the world. Today, I think the Lifting the Veil statue represents what we are showing the world. That, hey, we got great students that can produce great work in all disciplines. HBCUs produce top students. My name is Dr. Shauna L. Rogers. I'm a associate professor at Tuskegee University. Right now, diversity is what we need in this country. Specifically construction, we're running out of workers. The more that we are open to diversity, the more we open to giving these students chances, get to make everything better. Hey, we're here. It's 11 HBCUs that offer construction science, construction management. All 11 have great students. All 11 are well prepared. Just got to give them a chance. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program is back, and this year, 30 campus improvement grants are up for grabs. Want to know how your school could win its share of $1 million? Get involved! That's right, after your HBCU signs up, make some noise! Vote on Twitter, on Instagram, and on RetoolYourSchool.com. Go in! Go off! Go hard! Vote nonstop! Your school could be a grant winner, and that's how you retool your school. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Tuskegee didn't start off as a big campus. It started off in a small shack in the back of a church. The focus was always to build the community up. We share in a culture together that um, is kind of hard to explain. You gotta live it, you gotta enjoy it. It's the HBCU experience. It's nothing short than, than beautiful. So my name is Dia Hunter. I am an assistant professor of construction management here at Tuskegee. The students make the institution special. 
You're gonna deal with students that are brilliant, students who have a mind for construction. They bring diverse backgrounds, diverse ways of life. I love sharing this with students. I love giving them the tools that they need in order to be great at it. Just because we're at HBCU doesn't mean our education is, is different. Don't get me wrong, we have different values and traditions and culture and things like that. So we're gonna have different outlooks, different understandings on things, and that makes for a better company is Diverse Minds. I am Kaylin Parham, a graduating senior construction science and management major hailing from the Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. And to be a part of Tuskegee University's construction science and management program is to be a part of history. In this field, I'm, I'm underrepresented, I'm a black woman, so obviously it's not gonna be a lot of people like me, and that's okay, because we're still working for diversity, but the part that I would like to see more is the inclusion part. So yes, you have a black girl here and an Asian guy there, but do they feel comfortable in this environment? Do they feel like they're actually a part of the team? Let's start with HBCUs, and coming here and getting to know our students and our programs, you'll see that not only are we coming with the knowledge that you need us to have, but we also have have some different perspectives you might not have. We have to give back. Everybody counts or nobody counts, and that's got to be part of the leadership. By Procore taking the lead on this scholarship program and partnering with AGC as a Grand Slam home run. Well, I'm Bob Bowen, chairman and founder of Bowen Engineering. We can make a real difference in our industry, in our community, in our society. We're a better place to go than Tuskegee or the, or the other HBCUs. The Living the Veil of Ignorance statue represents Booker T. Washington telling all the slaves what they can be in the world. Today, I think the Living the Veil statue represents what we are showing the world. And hey, we got great students that can produce great work in all disciplines. HBCUs produce top students. My name is Dr. Shauna L. Rogers. I'm a associate professor at Tuskegee University. Right now, diversity is what we need in this country. Specifically construction, we're running out of workers. The more that we are open to diversity, the more we open to giving these students chances, get to make everything better. Hey, we're here. It's 11 HBCUs that offer construction science, construction management. All 11 have great students. All 11 are well prepared. Just gotta give them a chance. What does education mean when you choose the top HBCU in Alabama? Um, so one of the things that's been most valuable for my experience at Tuskegee is being able to face challenges head on. Um, I can definitely say here I've learned how to be an advocate for myself, how to speak up and how to present myself in ways that can help me get opportunities to help me fix things that may not be right. And I think that's really just the best skill that I've learned here that I can take with me for the rest of my life. Look forward to your bright future. Apply to Tuskegee University today. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to one average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. We are back live inside the Chappie James Center. Pre-game for the men's contest, post-game for the women's contest, and we're joined now by the head coach 
of the team that just played the Tigerettes of Tuskegee University. Coach, congratulations. You win at 89-74 over a team that you won by 10 in January. A better mm -hmm. output for the team this afternoon. We talked about it in the pregame. Not necessarily business as usual today, but a lot less of a dramatic ball game this afternoon. <laughs> right, right, right. Your thoughts about the contest overall? Um, I think we're still working towards, um, you know, trying to make our, ourselves better. Uh, we want to continue to focus on our rebound and our defense um, today. That was one of the things on our uh, game goals, and we got out-rebounded by four. So um, just continuing to preach those things, again, preparing for whatever comes down the road, but taking care of it one game at a time. This ball game started out a little bit smoother for you than what we saw on Wednesday against the Lady Dragons of Lane College. I know that had to help in terms of the rhythm of the ball game. Yeah, a, a little smoother. We still had uh, three unforced turnovers early. Um, I think it's probably because uh, Central State's defense is not as intense as Lane's out in their press. Um, but again, you know, we want to focus on the things that is going to make us better against those type of teams. So just continuing to let them know, like, cannot come out relaxed and with your guard down no matter who you're playing. Um, again, just getting ready for what's next down the road. Um, and I just want them to understand the importance of coming out ready. In this ball game this afternoon, you had an opportunity to get some other players in the lineup at, at mm -hmm. some point when we had a large enough lead to do it. What, what's your thinking as it relates to that, given where we are in the season with just uh, one more ball game remaining? Maybe thoughts about injuries, but also about just whether you're able to get your players some rest. Yeah, well, what I try to do is the, the kids that will still be here next year, just trying to give them that little experience wherever we can. Um, so anytime I get an opportunity to sub, I'm trying to throw them out there so they, they get a feel for the game and understand the importance of what we're teaching as far as the rebounding, um, getting to our spots on defense. To win this ball game, now we have one more home contest left, the final game of the regular season for the Tigerettes of Tuskegee. It's the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. Your thoughts about them coming into Chappie on Monday? <sighs> we, I mean, you know, we always battle with Kentucky State. Um, and no matter if we're on our floor or at their place, it's always a dog fight. Um, so definitely we don't want to be nervous in any way um, stepping up to an opponent. But we just, again, want to make sure the girls are prepared and understand what's on the line. Now we're down to the very last one. <laughs> so still, you know, just having that um, intensity from the jump to finish this last game of the season. And it is senior day for uh, Tuskegee. Uh, how many players are we looking at on your squad that's going to be a part uh, of that? We have four. Three mm -hmm. that are graduating, one that is a grad student. And I know you must have some special feelings for those students because they were kind of consistent with you coming in, taking over the program here. Absolutely. Um, Ashila has been here since day one. Um, you know, and she's been through two ACL injuries, and she has fought her way back from those, and she has been amazing for this team. And I just keep telling her, if anybody deserves it, you do. You know, she is the one that has helped this program get to where it is. Um, and because of her and the girls that we've had before, they have allowed us to get the recruits that we have now. So, um, man, to lose Jatoria Willis is going to be a huge blow for us. She is our defensive motor. Um, so I can't even think when I'm recruiting that we can replace that, you know. So it's going to be on us as coaches to help develop some kids to kind of, you know, play in her shadow, you know. So it's definitely going to be hard. And, you know, Ashanti Brown, like, she's an amazing teammate. She's a she wants to learn and get better. Um, Had some good quality minutes in the game today, absolutely. too. Absolutely. Huh? <laughs> She's so long. Um, but, yeah, we're definitely going to miss our seniors. And then Nadia, who just came this year. She only had this one year to play. But she was here with us last year, and she sat out. So, again, you know, losing her at, I mean, she can play the three or the four. You know, she helps us stretch the floor. She's always a mismatch for a bigger post player. And she has a huge heart, passion for the game. Yeah, you're right. It will be tough, difficult to replace all of them, but you have them for a little bit longer. A little bit into longer. into <laughs> Monday night and into the tournament. Yes. Congratulations on the win today, Coach. Thank we'll see you. you back here on Monday. Head Coach Trelane Powell, Tigerettes. Winners this afternoon, 89-74 over the Lady Marauders of Central State. Take a break here. More basketball action coming your way on the Golden Tiger Sports Network.
Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. We're back live inside the Chappie James Arena getting set for men's basketball action. Players being introduced here inside the center. We'll do the same thing with the tuna starting lineups for both teams in this men's contest. Tuskegee. Trying to go to 19 and 7 as we take a look at the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association starting lineups for Tuskegee. Familiar names, Devin Booker, Greg Boyd, Mason Green, Steve Dully, and Devereaux Davis getting the start this afternoon for Coach Taylor. For the Marauders of Central State, it's Marcus Steele, Kevin Moore, Raven Thomas, Marcus Scott. He is an all SIAC player for them. And Sean Page, the five for Coach Antonio Davis and Central State. Glad you could join us for our continuing coverage of Tuskegee basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. At the center square, it'll be Green jumping against Raven Thomas. Basketball is controlled by Tuskegee to get us going here. That's Greg Boyd, a senior for Tuskegee handling. Boyd from Seat Pleasant, Maryland. Up top, Devereaux Davis. Davis, the senior from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And the senior from Chicago, Devin Booker, fires his first field goal of the contest, but that one's off the mark. Back the other way, jumper in the corner, Marcus Steele, the sophomore from Salon, Ohio. Preps on that one in the corner for three. Entry pass, Davis. Left corner. This is the grad student, Green, with the jumper. And Mason Green with his first points of the ball game. 6'10", 200 grad student from Ellenwood, Georgia. Transferred into Tuskegee from Tennessee State. Steele out front now for the Marauders. Booker tapped that one out of bounds. Good defensive work by Devin. Antonio Davis, he is in his third season as a head coach of the Marauders of Central State. Benji Taylor in his fourth campaign at Tuskegee. Tuskegee right now second in the West in terms of standing. Central State number six. Tuskegee with one more ball game remaining on Monday. And Central State, I think with two, yeah, two left on their schedule throughout the course of the season. And all eyes now getting set to go towards Savannah, Georgia. As Kevin Moore hit a correction on that. That's Raven Thomas, the freshman with the jumper. Foul on extended for the Marauders. So they take an early lead, 5-2 over Tuskegee. Greg Boyd for the Golden Tigers out front. Dully to Booker. Booker pushes in the corner. Devereaux with the jumper there. Back of the iron. Rebound comes clear. Kevin Moore got that one for the Marauders. They push it down the floor. Left corner, Marcus Scott, the second team all SIAC player, fires a jumper and the rimmer is good by Scott. Scott leads the team in scoring with 13.7 points per ball game. Leads them from the free throw line. Assist 
steals at number of minutes as Boyd sinks a jumper from out front. His is a three-pointer. So Greg Boyd coming off 14 points, two rebounds, one assist, and two steals in the win over Spring Hill on the 11th. Last time these teams met back on January 9th, Boyd had 12 points and two rebounds. Foul called in the half court set for the Marauders of Central State. They'll call Devereaux Davis for the foul for Tuskegee. And that'll send Sean Page, the freshman from Maywood, Illinois, to the line. 57% free throw shooter, 29 of 51 coming into today's play. And he got the first. Page for the second of two. And he's good on both. So Tuskegee winners over Spring Hill and they won an overtime up in Memphis against Lamont Owen. This was on February 6th, they played Spring Hill on the 11th. So back-to-back -back wins. Booker outside, bucket. So Devin with his first points of the ball game, it's a three-pointer. We go to 17 minutes left, first half of action. So glad you could join us on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Half court set for the, Maroon, uh, the Marauders of Central State. Scott in the paint, had to change his shot, but the grad student, not affected by that, continued and he got the basket. So he's got back-to-back -back baskets for Central State. They lead it 8-12. Dully on the turn with the basketball. All to Booker. Back to Dully. Dully for three. Front of the iron. Green skies and got the rebound. Now it's loose on the floor. Devereaux Davis dives down there and jump ball. And the arrow, we'll see, looks like it's going in the favor of Central State. So that's Mason Green out there tying it up on the floor. Devereaux able to dive on it at the end of that play. But it goes over to Central State. Marcus Steele, the sophomore, handles. Devin Booker meets him near the mid-stripe. Scott guarded by Boyd. He'll slide right side. Lost his dribble there. Entry pass batted away. Good defensive effort there. Leads to a run out. Dully can't run it down, though. We go back the other way with Steele handling it. In the corner, this is a jumper by Moore and whistles underneath. We'll call the foul on Mason Green underneath. Green's got his hands full with the freshman Sean Page. Page at 6'8", 260. Mason 6'10", but a much lighter 200. 15-59 remains in the first half. Marauders of Central State lead it 12-8 over the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. A lot of basketball still ahead here, though. The Tuskegee University National Athletic Association is a proud sponsor of our broadcast coverage of Golden Tigers basketball. To find out how you can join this elite group of supporters of Tuskegee University Athletics, visit the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association website at www.tuskegee.edu forward slash T-U-N-A-A. Tuskegee University National Athletic Association, glad to have you on board as a sponsor of our coverage of Tuskegee basketball. And thank you so much for what you all do in support of Tuskegee University Athletics. Long going relationship that organization started in the mid 80s and has been a constant provider of support for Tuskegee over the years. If you want to join that organization, visit the website. Easy to do. We'll be glad to have you. And you will be encouraged by what you're doing and you'll see tangible evidence of it in terms of the projects that they undertake on behalf of Tuskegee Athletics. Back out on the floor, basketball belongs to the Marauders of Central State. Kashawn Key, the junior from Cleveland, out on the floor. He will inbound it for the Marauders to Willie Jackson, a senior who, who uh, is out on the floor after the timeout. Whistles and a travel violation or a foul there. Blocking foul by Willie Jackson, who just got out on the floor. The Anthony Pennington, the sophomore, out on the floor for Coach Benchy Taylor in Tuskegee. Also out is Martez Jones. Pennington works off a screen by Devereaux. Back to Devereaux. Now Boyd handles. 
Right corner, DeAnthony. Dumped it down at the block. Jones got the easy lay in. Good entry pass there by the sophomore, DeAnthony Pennington. Head on a swivel, saw that Jones had some space in there and got a good pass. Moore lost his dribble, but going toward the basket, missing on the shot was Jackson. Run out for Tuskegee, four on two basketball. Left side Boyd with a three-pointer, left it short. Pennington tapped it, it'll come clear. Booker gets it in the backcourt. Boyd surveys, up to Boyd, to Booker that is. Booker again, Booker again. A rattle that good, the senior from Chicago. Transferred from Lamont on. And then nothing but golden for the Golden Tigers. Moore with a jumper, that one out of bounds, didn't hit a thing, so Tuskegee with the basketball on a one point lead. Their first lead of the ball game as Steve Dully makes it out on the floor. Devereaux Davis takes the seat. So right now it's Martez Jones, Devin Booker, Steve Dully, DeAnthony Pennington, and Rico Hallman, the sophomore from Atlanta, out. Booker surveys, trying to get it down there at the block to Jones, instead across the floor to Pennington. Now Dully takes a turn looking to the inside. Zone defense by the Marauders. DeAnthony. Left corner, got it down there to Hallman. Hallman, Booker, 10 to shoot, no hurry there. Booker in the corner. This is Dully, push past Pennington, five to shoot. DeAnthony to the rack, shot partially deflected. And here come the Marauders. Marcus fires a three, shot nothing and missed. Uh, missed not, got nothing on that shot. He missed the cylinder and it goes out of bounds over to Tuskegee. Still back out on the floor. He'll replace Scott, who just missed that three-point shot. Tuskegee with his first lead of the ball game. Pennington to Booker. Dully down low. Got it there on the, behind the defense. A shot up by Jones is missed, but a whistle inside. Martez will be fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line for Tuskegee. Jones, the sophomore from Tuskegee, at the line all spatted up in his multicolored shoes to shoot the free throws here for Tuskegee. And Martez, 57% free throw missed on the first. One more coming. Take a tight look at those multicolored shoes. Kind of a rainbow looking effect. Like those. Jones missed them both from the line and a whistle inside the paint. Good collapse inside by Rico Hallman. He was fouled. And Rico will allow Tuskegee to keep this basketball. The Anthony Pennington, the sophomore, to inbound it. Booker in the corner. Book it again. Booker. Three field goals early in this first half of play. He's perfect from behind the arc so far. Tuskegee, 16-12 with the lead. Jackson in a half-court set. Up to Steele. On the weave, out on the floor now. This is Isaiah Bolware, the sophomore. And they give it out front. Steele with the jumper, missed on the shot. DeAnthony chases it down, backside for Tuskegee. Sophomore with the quick step, pushes it in the corner. Hallman for three. Bingo! Rico Hallman comes alive from behind the arc. Full court pressure, whistles in the backcourt. Timeout taken by Coach Antonio Davis. Does not want this thing to go off the rails too quickly here inside the Chappie James Center. 13-13 remains first half. Tuskegee with his largest lead thus far. 19-12 over the Marauders. We'll take a break here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Are you looking for education that leads to career success? And something more? We are Tuskegee University one of the nation's top-ranked HBCUs. We believe in education to fulfill your purpose. Here, you work hard because you dream harder. By pursuing your purpose, you will make a difference. Are you ready for something big? Let's get started. Officials for this afternoon's ball games, Ken Washington, he's the crew chief, Scott Richard and Spencer Bass with the call. 
as we go back to live action. Bowware in the backcourt. Now across the floor, key across the timeline. Jackson trying to dump it down low. They got it down at the block. Turning there is Thomas. Thomas tied up by Draper, who just got on the floor, and a whistle there. Thomas' shot fell off, but Draper down low, and they're going to get Anthony Pennington with a foul down low for Tuskegee. Take a look at the action. As uh, Thomas was at the line, he'll be shooting. And it was Pennington, the guilty of the foul, but on the floor, Kasami Draper, the freshman for Tuskegee. This first spot of duty this afternoon, 6'9", 210 pounds from Conyers, Georgia. Thomas, one of two from the line for the Marauders. Pennington, hard push left side, DeAnthony reverse lay in and he got it to fall. Nice touch there by the Anthony, the Anthony Pennington near the cylinder. Soft touch on the reverse lay in. His first points of the ball game. Basketball nearly thrown out of bounds by the Marauders. Up top they go to Thomas. Down in the corner, this is Jackson for three. Found the bottom for the Marauders. Jackson. 21 16 Tuskegee with the lead and the basketball as Greg Boyd slides across the timeline. He's in the multicolored spats as well. Pennington on a move, gives it to Dully. Dully, hard push right side. Steve, head fake, can't get it airborne, goes back out front to Hallman. Under 10 to shoot now for Tuskegee. Rico raises, fires, got it again for the Tigers. <laughs> Rico, back-to-back -back three pointers for him. Very calm on that three-point shot. Clock running down, and the sophomore nailed it. 24-16, Tuskegee leads. Key with the basketball for the Marauders. Jackson at the block, lead behind inside for Thomas. Nicely done. Jackson will get the will get the assist. Thomas with the basket. Hallman handles. Foul on extended. Hard push right side. Rico whistles on the penetration. Good job by Rico creating that contact on his penetration. 11-17 left first half of play. It's a 24-18 lead for Tuskegee. Got a timeout on the floor here. We're going to take one as well on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14-to-1 average student-to-teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors, and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. Tuskegee cheerleaders here inside the Chappie James Center. Leading at the... Golden Tigers 24-18 over the Marauders of Central State. Senior night here on Monday at Tuskegee, and some of those young ladies there with the cheerleading squad will be recognized on Monday as well. I heard Coach Powell in her post-game interview talking about the four seniors she has on her roster, and they are a big part of what Tuskegee has done over the last, since the entire presence of Coach Powell being here at Tuskegee. So that's going to be a... A very, not necessarily festive, but uh, and not necessarily sad because you're always happy to see students headed toward graduation. But there will be some difficulty replacing some of those players on the basketball floor. But we'll have it for you here on Monday night. It'd be great if you can join us here inside the Chappie James Center to just support the program and support those student athletes who have been a part of it. Hallman from the line, one of two for the sophomore. Up 
Basketball kicked in the backcourt. Rico just kind of spreading those legs for defensive purpose. Found the basketball. Marauders in Central State in the backcourt. Tuskegee applying that full court pressure. Out front is Steele with the basketball. Right side, Willie Jackson. I was talking to Coach Powell after the post-game interview, and she shared something very interesting. Share it with you after this play. It's a lay-in on the inside by the freshman, Sean Page, for the Marauders of Central State. So the Tuskegee lead down to 5, 25-20. She indicated that the National Ranking Committee had gotten together earlier this week in which she sits on that committee. And they had pushed Tuskegee down from the regional rankings. They had the region had them at seven, but on the national rankings, they put Tuskegee at nine. And that pushes them out of that automatic bid if you finish in the top eight. And boy, you just have to wonder, and you know, she's a part of that committee. She just expressed her just, just consternation about how they could drop them out of that, out of that region ranking at seventh. Booker in the corner with a jumper. That one's on the front of the iron. Dully got a rebound, trying to fight it to the rack and it's tapped out of bounds. Just goes to show you though, although there is a newfound respect for HBCUs as it relates to social causes that have created that attention and contributions from the corporate world into corporate uh, HBCUs, there is still this misnomer out there or this impression by at least a lot of folks in the athletic sphere that the play at HBCUs by virtue of the conferences overall is not as strong as it relates to other conferences that are on the same level. But that's a mental thing that they have to deal with. Not a lot that can be done about it other than what you do on the floor. 10.07 remains here in this first half of play. And the Marauders of Central State will inbound the basketball. Sorry to get on that soapbox for just a minute, but just learned that from Coach Powell after her interview. Shots off in the paint by the Marauders. Pennington comes back the other way for Tuskegee. Draper, foul on extended. Draper fights underneath the defense to the cylinder and a soft kiss lay in there by Kasami Draper. Just kind of floated and waited for that defense to pass and just got a good lay in to the basket. His first points of the ball game. Down at the block, they double page and a whistle. Travel violation on the inside. Good job on the inside by Draper. Jones kind of converging on him to force him to take the steps. Booker back out on the floor. The Anthony Pennington takes the seat. So Boyd back out. So it's Boyd, Draper, Booker, Dully, and Jones out on the floor. Martez handles away from the basket. Up top behind the arc, Draper. 9.22 left in a pretty quick moving first half of play. Jones lost his dribble. Back out to Booker, who's perfect from the floor. Dully slides right side, foul on extended. Let the defense wave by. Missed on the jumper, though. Whistles, we go back the other way. Martez trying to collect that rebound, but he was doing it over the back of Mark, Marcus Scott. So he picks up his first, and we go back the other way. Kevin Moore to inbound it. Marcus Steele in the backcourt. Marcus Scott out there for the Marauders as well as Sean Page. And Raven Thomas, the freshman. Those are the five for Coach Antonio Davis and the Marauders. This is Moore with the basketball. Slides the paint. Push back out to Scott. Scott hard pushing the paint. The floater. Spinner is good. Scott showing great agility inside the paint there for Central State. Cuts the lead for Tuskegee back to five. 8.35 left first half. Jones, top of the key. Now Dully surveys. Steve looking to penetrate, goes to Booker instead. Devin out front, pushes left side, backs up, got some space. Jumper, Rimmer off the mark, his first miss from the floor. Whistles. And we tie it up, jump ball. Good job there by Martez Jones to tie up Sean Page to get the jump ball with the arrow facing, uh, favoring the Tigers of Tuskegee. 
Jones still a work in progress as it relates to his finesse around the basket in terms of lay-ins and easy short shots. But no shortage of heart by him and no shortage of strong defensive play by Martez Jones. Just really want to see him after he develops a little stronger offensively. Boy, talk about offense. Missed on that shot, though. There he was. Just what we're talking about. Jones working on the offensive end of the floor. Got a rebound, a put back in a basket. That's a strong finish for the sophomore. Scott circles. Back out front. This is Steele at the block. Now pushes back out. Up top, Thomas. Scott back to Thomas. Thomas foul on extended. Shot it hard. Page tapped it. Missed on that. But good on his put back inside for the Marauders. Lead still five for Tuskegee. Kasami pops out for the basketball. We go down to 7.36 left. Booker all the way through. Floater to the back of the iron. Had a good look, just didn't finish. Leads to a run out. Scott back the other way. And Dully takes his legs from under him on that lay-in. Dully trying to be deliberate about not following him, following uh, Scott down on the end of the floor. But take a look at the end of this play. You can see he's just giving, showing a fake token as if he's going to try to block it, but he, this momentum just carried him right into Scott. And Scott, the headsy player, the grad student, felt the contact continued on the lay-in, so he'll be going to the line to try to convert on a three-point play, but he'll do it after this timeout. 7.28 remains first half. Tuskegee leads at 29-26. Back with more on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to one average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. Back live inside the Chappie James Center. It's the Golden Tigers Sports Network coverage of Tuskegee basketball. Tuskegee leading at 29-26 over the Marauders of Central State. The Tigerettes of Tuskegee winners in the women's contest earlier tonight. So they pushed their season mark to 22-3. And, and they go to a perfect 19-0 in conference play. They've already clinched the number one spot headed into the SIAC tournament next Saturday. Start for the tournament, likely Tigerettes not playing until quarterfinal day that Wednesday. After the timeout, Scott to the free throw line, and he got the free throw. So he converts on a three-point play for the Marauders, and the lead for Tuskegee to two. Boyd in the front court. Dully on the weave, Booker free, got some space. Oh boy, that was down for the senior, just popped out of there. Good look, just didn't get the result. Entry pass, there's Jones again. We talked about him, look at the athleticism to steal that away. Dully raises, jumper, no good. Backside rebound, fought for it, nothing but black jerseys under the cylinder that time. Thomas clears for Central State. They can tie it with a basket this trip down the floor. Tuskegee won it at Central State 67 to 50 in their ball game in January. Bodies tumbling underneath the cylinder. Marcus Scott, last one coming up from there. And we're going to stay on there into the floor shooting free throws. They call the foul on Devereaux. And Marcus Scott to the line to shoot. Scott, second team all SIC player. 87% free throw shooter coming into today's ball game. 79 of 91 for the Marauders of Central State. Kazami Draper back out on the floor. Enrico Hallman back out there. They'll place Mar replace Martez Jones and Devereaux Davis. So for Coach Taylor now, it's Greg Boyd, Devin Booker, Kazami Draper, Rico Hallman, and Steve Dully, the five going with 6.36 remaining. 
And we go tied in this basketball game at 29. Boyd to Booker. Now Draper handles up top Hallman. Rico trying to get it inside to Kasami. Have to come back out front instead. Shot clock working its way toward 10 as Boyd handles left side. Boyd all the way to the rack and he drew a foul. Marcus Scott trying to catch up with Greg. And the red shirt senior from Seat Pleasant, Maryland, drew the foul. And he'll be going to the line for Tuskegee. Trying to break this 29-29 tie. Boyd leads the team from the free throw line. 78 of 92 coming into today's ball game at 85%. But he missed that first one. One of two from the line for Boyd. Tuskegee reclaims the lead by a point. Steele handles in the backcourt. Lost it. Booker took it away. Booker. Alley-oop. There's Draper. He missed on the lay-in. Wow. Tuskegee with a chance to get a basket there. Instead, it goes back the other way, and Scott knocks down a three-pointer. Draper trying to do that in all-in-one motion on the alley-oop pass from Booker and just not able to convert. Hallman handles. He'll slide all the way through left side and a whistle inside the paint. That trip down the floor after the steal by Booker in the backcourt. Booker trying to set up that alley-oop pass. Probably better serve just getting it into Draper's hands away from the basket and letting Draper finish it on his own. It's a timing thing with that alley-oop pass, and the timing was a bit off there, and Draper not able to convert. Instead, it leads to a run out, and Marauders finish that with a three-pointer by Marcus Scott, and they take a two-point lead. Draper to the sideline. as Martez Jones comes back out for Tuskegee. Hallman from the line got the first. Tuskegee will finish regular season play on Monday on senior night, hosting the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. Our coverage Sponsored today and on Monday by the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association. As Steele handles out front and we're tied at 32. Steele plas Booker to the rack and a whistle. Call's gonna be made down low on Martez Jones trying to help out on that play. And that'll put the sophomore Marcus Steele at the line shooting for Central State. Last meeting, Tuskegee had 24 bench points in that ball game. Those bench, those points coming off of off of uh, turnovers by the Marauders of Central State. Tuskegee had 15 points off of turnovers. 24 points from the player reserve players as well in that ball game. Central State with only five points off of turnovers in their first meeting. This is Hallman with the basketball. Up front, Jones handles on the weave. Greg Boyd pushes the three. Spinner is good for Boyd. Greg kind of pushes that three-point shot out from almost near his chest, but he is deadly from outside with that three-pointer. Gives Tuskegee a 35-32 lead with that three-point shot. Steele lost his dribble, pushes back out front to Moore. Now Scott on the move all the way through, had it tapped from behind. It'll stay with uh, Central State. Good defensive effort there by the Tigers to get it out of the hands of Scott on the penetration. Pennington back out on the floor for Coach Taylor and Tuskegee. Back out front, Moore handles the basketball. Booker trying to take it away from Steele. Almost did just in front of the Tuskegee bench. Good work there. 
Entry pass, Page working on Jones, missed on the shot. Jones clears the errant shot for Tuskegee. Tuskegee by three, can build on that lead here. Boyd works it right side. Now caught up with the defense, goes back out Pennington. That's going to be an over and back. Boyd trying to do a little bit too much that time in the half-court offensive set. Lost that basketball, comes down the, end of the other end of the floor, patting its chest, saying, my bad, guys, that one's on me. Tuskegee by three. And we're at 4-10 remaining. Steal, half-court set for Marauders. Bounce pass at the block. Jackson's there, can't finish. Whistles down low. And it looks like we're headed to the other end of the floor. They call the foul on Sean Page, the freshman. So into the bonus we go, and Tuskegee's going to be shooting. But they will be shooting after this timeout with 3.58 remaining in the first half, and Tuskegee leading at 35-32. Take a timeout here. Home, where you hang out with friends, do homework, relax, explore, where you can be yourself. Come home to Tuskegee University. Get the education that changes lives, including your own. Hey, future business leader, launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University. We get the business of business education. Back live inside Chappie James. 3.58 remaining in the first half. Home contest for Tuskegee. They'll finish out the regular season at home again here on Monday when they host the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. Then, after Monday, it's on to Savannah. Tournament action starting on the 25th down in Tiger Arena on the Savannah State University campus. At the line right now, Martez Jones shooting for Tuskegee. Jones to shoot. Jones good on that first free throw. So the Tuskegee lead back to four, four now, 36-32. And Rico rattles that second one, and it wouldn't stay down for him. Arcturic and Jones missing on that second. Back the other way, Jackson with a jumper. That one's an air ball, and we'll go back the other way with Tuskegee handling it. Draper back out on the floor now. Jones takes a seat. So Kasami Draper, the freshman, replaces the sophomore in the lineup. So it's Pennington, Draper. Allman still out there. Booker and Boyd. Booker out front across the floor to Pennington. DeAnthony up top to Kasami. Entry pass, one on one. Draper to the rack and a whistle there. Got to travel. Good defensive stop down low there for Sean Page. Draper trying to find some space. Took too many steps. Tuskegee jumps into full court pressure. Steele pushes up to Scott. Scott tiptoes the baseline, shoved out of bounds. Booker guilty. Guarding closely at the sideline, picks up his first. Scott to shoot here with 3.21 remaining. Booker started out on fire in this game, hitting his first three field goals as Scott gets that first free throw to fall. A lot of momentum and excitement amongst the SIAC schools about the tournament being located down in Savannah. Savannah. A beautiful city in terms of hosting the tournament. 
And a good basketball IQ for the residents of Savannah who will likely enjoy SIAC basketball coming to the hostess city of the South. Draper underneath the defense missed on the shot. Not sure about your tickets in terms of uh, when you want to attend. Let's take a look at the brass brackets of visiting the SIC tournament site as Scott works it in the corner. It's www.dsiac.com. Steele on the move in the corner. Got some space, got the jumper airborne, missed on the shot. Hallman clears for Tuskegee. He's roughed up in the backcourt. Moore trying to deny him going forward and commits the foul. So that'll send Hallman to the line for Tuskegee shooting with 2.30 remaining. Draper takes a seat for Coach Taylor and back out on the floor is Martez Jones. Hallman got that first free throw. Nicely done by Rico, the sophomore. From Atlanta, played at Skills Factory Prep High School. So you know if you come out of the Skills Factory, you're going to have some skills coming to the next level. And Hallman showing some skill from the free throw line, knocked down both of those. 2.30 left first half, Tuskegee by four. Scott in the backcourt. Over to Stephen Key, the freshman who just got out on the floor for Coach Davis. Zone defense for Tuskegee. Marauders way away from the basket. Scott with the jumper in the corner. They didn't get there quick enough. And Scott just such a steady player for the Marauders. Found the space in the corner. Tuskegee in that zone. A good passing around the perimeter by the Marauders. Got Scott free for the jumper. Booker out front. He'll slide right side. Devin challenges to the rack. Nicely done by the senior. Just so soft around that cylinder are his hands and his body control. Just got enough space leaning back from the defense. Found the glass, knocked it down. 40-37 Tuskegee leads. Still with the basketball. Across the floor to Key. This is the man they want to have it in his hands is Scott. Scott tried to go across the floor. Hallman took it away. Three on two break for Tuskegee. Booker, Pennington to the glass, and that's nicely done. The timing was there on the alley-oop pass from Booker, and Pennington able to collect it in stride and in motion got the lay-in. Easier done with that. Pennington probably a little bit more athletic than when they tried it early on in the ball game with Jones. 42-37 under a minute remaining first half. Page with the basketball and a five-second violation there. Basketball over to the Golden Tigers. Devereaux Davis out on the floor. He'll replace Rico Hallman in the lineup. And Coach Taylor with 51 seconds will take a time out here. 42-37. I think he made the move already in terms of his personnel. Getting uh, Davis back out on the floor in this set as you take a look at that alley-oop down the floor. And good body control by the sophomore. Received that pass and in motion got the lay-in for Tuskegee. That'll give them a little bit of breathing room here if they can convert here after this timeout. And you know that Coach Taylor is going to try to draw up something out of this timeout to give them an opportunity to one burn some clock but come away with a good quality look this trip down the floor as we start looking at the halftime just in front of us. Muskegee trying to take its record to 19 and 7. 14 and 5 in conference play. Still engaged in the battle for that number one spot and the number one seed of the West coming into the tournament. One ball game left on Monday. Miles with a ball game left as well. Miles playing this, this afternoon as well. Mount Tuskegee beat Miles in both ball games this season. So if it comes down to just head to head, and you see exactly what was drawn up there by Taylor then Tuskegee will get that number one seed by virtue of winning the head-to-head. -head. 
after the timeout. It was drawn up for Boyd to penetrate, and if they didn't pick him up, do exactly what he did. It went right to the rack for the basket. Jackson underneath pushes back out. They're giving it to Scott. 25 seconds left, first half on the move is key. Had to change his shot in motion and did so. Busher, Booker, that is, flashed on the defense. But Key able to keep it under control for the lay-in. So 10 seconds left now. Time for Tuskegee to see if they can't get one shot up before the buzzer. Boyd, out front, raises, fires, missed on the shot. Pennington tried to sky for it. Jackson, they won't get it airborne. So Tuskegee with a few seconds remaining in that first half of play to get a look there. Boyd took it out front. Missed on the shot, so we go into the break with Tuskegee leading at 44-39 over the Marauders of Central State. Stay where you are. More basketball action coming your way on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Tuskegee didn't start off as a big campus. It started off in a small shack in the back of a church. The focus was always to build the community up. We share in a culture together that um, it's kind of hard to explain. You gotta live it, you gotta enjoy it. It's the HBCU experience. It's nothing short than, than beautiful. So my name is Dia Hunter. I am an assistant professor of construction management here at Tuskegee. And welcome, Colonel Sullen. So glad you could join us on the broadcast today and glad to have you here to come in and talk to us a little bit about the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association. I know you are first vice chairman for membership, so probably nobody better within the organization to talk to the fans about tuna than you and how important membership is. So let's back up a little bit and start by talking about the history of tuna and what it was originally founded for. Well, thank you so much for the invit invitation and opportunity to, to talk to you and to talk to uh, our alumni and those on the broadcast today. The tuna was initially uh, the brainchild of three individuals uh, that uh, were football and baseball, the athletes at Tuskegee, uh, Dr. Hugh Ogletree, uh, Mr. Harold Williams, and Mr. Jim, James Jimmy Carter. Uh, they wanted to see the athletic program recognize uh, the past athletes, as well as do some things for the present program. And so w they put their heads together and uh, put a coalition of, of uh, athletes, as well as a coalition of those who are interested, alumni and, and students. And uh, so they came together to uh, start this program that's now known as TUNA. And uh, TUNA is the official uh, athletic uh, organization that represents the athletic programs at Tuskegee University uh, and uh, we have over the years uh, done what we could to uh, augment the programs and the, uh, the uh, programs and activities that the athletic program overall was about not just football not just baseball but all athletics not just men's athletics but women's also, all the athletic programs on, on the campus. And so we've evolved today, all the way today, to uh, continue that under the present administration uh, and, of course, working with the athletic director as well as uh, the uh, administration, current administration, Dr. Morris and, and her staff, uh, in making sure that the word gets out to the alumni, to uh, athletes, former athletes, so those athletes that will become alumni in the future, uh, and those who are just interested in the success of Tuskegee uh, University and its athletic programs, which, as you know, has a lot of history uh, and goes way back as far as a successful program in, uh, with, with uh, wins and, and, and history. 
I'm glad to hear you say a couple things there, Colonel Sarlins, that really chime in. And first, we have to really backpedal and thank you and Tuna for joining us as one of our sponsors of the broadcast coverage of Tuskegee Basketball. Uh, to your point about the organization being encompassing to uncover all the sports offered at Tuskegee, this is a prime example of it. We cover the women's basketball program just as we do the men, and the effort of Tuna really is shining and making this possible that we are able to bring the broadcast to not only the alums of Tuskegee, but fans of basketball across the world, in fact, with the stream. So first of all, thank you and the organization for supporting us on the broadcast. And as you were talking about the, 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 the organization and its, it, its enveloping approach to helping all the programs at Tuskegee University, Talk a little bit about some of the initiatives that you all have. I know we talked about it off air a few days ago that one of the focus points that you have is for those student athletes who have exhausted eligibility, but still may need some help in terms of finishing matriculating at Tuskegee. That, that's absolutely right. Um, so we uh, have a, developed a scholarship called the Atlanta Spencer uh, Scholarship, which is designed to take those students who have uh, spent their time as athletes at Tuskegee University and uh, no longer are qualified to uh, get the benefits of the scholarships that they came there for. And so we do what we can to assist them in uh, make, making sure that they are eligible and able to finish school uh, timely. We talked about too was just the idea with 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 the association being such a pillar behind the athletics department that uh, you understand it obviously because you were first vice chair and a member of Tuna. But talk to the individuals out there who may be on the fence of thinking about okay, why do I need? And in, in the case of an alum who may be asking, okay, I'm already a member of the Tuskegee National Alumni Association. Why should I dial it down even further to deal with athletics? Talk a little bit about why it's important for people to give that, that additional thought process and then join the athletic association. The athletic program in, in Turkey has, has been a pillar of uh, the history. And with that said, there have been many thousands of athletes that have chosen Tuskegee because of the history that the athletic program has uh, offered uh, to uh, the world. And uh, many uh, noted athletes have, have come out and become successful in, in, in all areas of, of uh, life uh, outside of uh, athletics. But at the same time, it's very important uh, that our organization uh, takes on a role to give our athletes and our students alumni and our uh, alumni uh, parents and those who are interested some type of platform to come together as a coalition to assist the needs of uh, the athletic programs as a whole. And so that's our purpose to, to do just that, bring people together. And I want to dial into it just a little bit more based upon your comments, because I, th I think it's important that I hear you saying that anybody can join the athletic association that has any affinity to Tuskegee at all. But one of the areas of concentration for you and the organization is to really reach back and identify former athletes from Tuskegee, parents of athletes or students that attend Tuskegee and did attend in the past for them to really give it strong consideration because of their nexus to Tuskegee athletics. Is that uh, correct? That, that is correct. And also for them to understand that what we try to do is, is make sure that we uh, work with the university to uh, see what their needs are today uh, and going forward. And just to give you an idea of some of the things that we've done for the uh, university in the past as an organization. Uh, the Alumni Bowl, which is the, the stadium, uh, Cleve Albert Stadium now, uh, the uh, public address system there was, was really in, in bad shape until Tuna stepped on board a few years ago. Uh, the Gator uh, utility vehicle we purchased for them, the baseball scoring uh, board, uh, infield, outfield surface uh, that we did, uh, and the dugout restorations, uh, the Chappie James Arena uh, scoring table at, at the uh, basketball court, uh, the flooring, resurfacing the flooring, 
floor that's down there now is one that was replaced by tuna uh, because the old floor had become uh, unplayable and, and unusable. Softball field scoreboard replacements, student athletes, tuition assistance programs we talked about, and, and just uh, the locker room upgrade. Of course, that locker room's gone now. The AD, uh, Mr. Ruffin, is uh, instrumental in putting together a beautiful facility down and replace the, the one that was there before. But we dug in our heels with them when they were struggling to um, make sure that those athletes had some place to uh, change. Perfect comment there. And I was on the campus just a couple of days ago prior to a, a women's basketball game and got a chance to see almost all the facilities you, you just ran off in terms of the support from Tuna was there. They had a baseball game going earlier that day, saw what you were talking about there. And obviously down at the at the football field and even inside of Chappie James, just an outstanding level of support that you all have given to athletics. So we're not talking about competition between joining the Athletics Association and anybody that's already a member of the Alumni Association. This is just another arm of being able to give back to Tuskegee. And you all are doing a tremendous job with that, Colonel Sullivan. So just want to take our hats off to you for that. But as we think about, uh, talk about maybe wrapping up the interview in just a few seconds, just want to give you an opportunity to give people out there uh, information about how they can become a member of TUNA. Tuna has a, a website in conjunction with the university, and we, we are everything that we do is on behalf of the university to include donations that come in. Uh, they go to Tuskegee University, and if you wrote a check, it would be to Tuskegee University. And uh, in the memo section, you put Tuna, but we do we are recognized on the web, on the uh, website Tuskegee University website, and you go to www.tuskegee.edu forward slash Tuna. And uh, there's information there, even about our walkway, our athletics wa legacy walkway, which was uh, implemented about in, in uh, 2015 in an effort to augment uh, or uh, to generate funds that uh, athletes and, and those who uh, non-athletes that would like to uh, help us with that athletic legacy uh, could purchase bricks. And so that program is offered on that website, but www.tuskegee.edu forward slash tuna is a good way to, to start that, uh, that process. And our membership is, uh, well, we ask for a donation of $100 of basic membership, but certainly there are levels of membership that uh, are higher than that. And we appreciate those higher levels because that we can do more with what we get in. And there are also, and I want to put you on the spot on this, but there are also some additional benefits for people who join TUNA, like maybe particular seating or a, a ticket opportunities in terms of football games and even at some of the basketball games. Anything you want to chime in on there? Because, you know, people like to hear and what the added levels of joining may be. Just a quick reference to that. Uh, yes, there are uh, tickets that uh, are offered. Uh, at different levels for uh, different levels of uh, membership. And certainly uh, the big process we look for is a platform to give back to Tuskegee. That's the main thing. And that is the biggest, biggest benefit that we offer for uh, all of the members and to come back and support the Tuskegee Athletics Program. Colonel, I know you are, we're doing this remote and you are away from the city, but we got big, big basketball action going on today. and into Monday as Tuskegee is wrapping up its season in terms of basketball. Again, we thank you all for being one of our broadcast supporters, but as an Atit Tuskegee alum, I know you're keeping a close eye on both the women and men. They are both right there with a chance to come in seated number one into the SIAC tournament. So the excitement and the legacy of Tuskegee athletics and its success even continues to this day, and even with basketball. So thank you for being a part of our support again. You're certainly welcome. And your remote broadcast, uh, or it really helps us that can't get there to be yeah. right there. <laughs> Colonel Palmer Sullen is the first vice chairman of membership for TUNA, the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association. Kind enough to join us remotely for the broadcast. Colonel, thanks so much, and we'll see you soon. Back live inside the Chappie James Center, Tuskegee basketball continuing on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. 
Special thanks to Colonel Paul Rasullam of the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association for allowing us to sit down with him in a remote interview earlier this week. And those were some of his comments relating to the association and their support for Tuskegee Athletics. On the floor here, 44-39, Tuskegee with the lead. But at halftime, took a trip to the restroom just uh, to get ready for the second half and had one of the Tuskegee faithfuls in there saying, man, we just can't seem to pull away from these guys. I said, well, it'll probably come in the second half, but that was prior to me looking at the stats at halftime. And you can see why this ball game is really kind of so close because in that first half of play, Central State 57% from the floor, 13 of 23 shooting from the floor. Five of seven from behind the arc. That's good for 73% shooting, or 71% shooting from behind the arc. And they hit eight of 11 free throws in that first half. Had 15 rebounds and seven, just seven turnovers. Pretty close to that in terms of Tuskegee. They were 15 of 30 from the floor at 50%. 44% from the three-point arc. Seven of 16 shooting for Tuskegee. And they were 7 of 12 from the free throw line. 13 rebounds for the Golden Tigers. And they, just had, they had just two turnovers in that first half. So those numbers pretty close to mirroring each other in the first 20 minutes of play. That's why the lead for Tuskegee is only at 5 at this point. As we get set to go into the second half, glad you could join us for our coverage on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Charles Ward here with the rest of the production crew on a Saturday afternoon in Tuskegee, Alabama. Play is set, and we're back on the way. Back here on Monday as well for the season finale of Golden Tigers basketball on senior night. Special night here at Chappie James. A chance to talk to the athletics director, Reginald Ruffin. He stopped by here at halftime saying that, yeah, indeed, it's going to be a special night of recognition for these senior players, and deservedly so. Boyd, after the timeout now, or the intermission inside, and he got the basketball inside to Green, and Green just not able to finish. Right there at the cylinder and missed. This time, Scott not able to finish on a three-point effort. Missed everything, and we go back the other way. So the players coming out of the intermission, Green missing a crip shot on the inside, and Scott missing everything on his field goal attempt. Booker works it right side. He had three three-pointers in the first half. Finished that first half with 11 for Tuskegee. Boyd, he does not miss this first offering here in the second half. And Greg Boyd knocks down a three-pointer to get us going. 47-39 after Greg's three. Tuskegee with the lead. Marauders with the basketball. Out front. They get it into the hands of Thomas. Now over the steal. Booker has that defensive assignment. Back out front, this is Kevin Moore handling. Sean Page, the freshman, foul on extended, got his jumper airborne, creased the rim, basketball to Booker. Devin with a two on three, pulls up with the jumper, or oh, missed on that one though, had a good look. Basketball tapped by Green out the dully. Tuskegee with another look, Booker, Booker again. This time you can't give him two, he got that one. So that's a three pointer for Booker. You may miss the first, but you line him up again. That's what you're going to get. Booker knocks down another three to take the lead to 50 to 39 for Tuskegee. 18-25 left in the ball game. Forces a timeout by the Marauders of Central State and Coach Antonio Davis. Smart timeout by him, trying to keep things within perspective. It's Tuskegee trying to go on a run. Good start for them in the second half. Boyd hit a three, and so has Devin Booker. Last time these teams met, Tuskegee forced 23 Central State turnovers. Central State at the break in this ball game with just seven turnovers. Those 23 turnovers led to 15 points for Tuskegee. Couple that with 24 points from the bench for Tuskegee. And they had 40 points in the pink in that ball game against Central State up in Wilberforce in mid-January. Trying to double that effort here tonight and to beat Central State twice during the regular season. 
and located that Tuskegee and Miles kind of engaged to determine who's going to actually come out as a number one seed in the West. If it comes down to head to head, it'll go to Tuskegee. They beat Miles twice in the regular season. Already know that the women seeded number one clinched already for the tournament. Boyd anticipating at the sideline, tapped it out of bounds. Kevin Moore will inbound it. This is Steele with the basketball. Up top, Scott, back to Steele. Trying to dump it down low at the block and whistles down low. A call the foul on Mason Green. And Green is coming up incredulous after that call. I wonder what in the world did he do inside. So Jones gets summoned immediately to come onto the floor as Mason takes a seat. Get a fresh 20. The Marauders do after the foul on Green. It'll be Steele to inbound it just left of their cylinder with 18.03 left in the ball game. Central State will host or be on the road on Monday against the Badgers of Spring Hill. And then they'll finish up their regular season on a Wednesday night of next week against Kent State University. So the Marauders got a basket that trip down the floor. Their first of the second half. Booker lost his dribble back out front to Dully. Dully slides all the way through with the right hand floater and he got the lay in. kind of aqua green looking sneakers he has as Devereaux Davis backed up that play and bat batted the basketball out of bounds. So the assortment for sneakers for the Tigers was varied as Scott got the entry pass but Boyd knocked it out of bounds. Good job there by Greg Boyd. Got Devin Booker there. It looks like he's got kind of a gold ensemble on his sneaker and a whistle on the entry pass. So Davis picks up that foul. And it'll be Steele to inbound it right of the cylinder. Rico Hallman will come back out on the floor. He'll replace Devereaux Davis. Davis getting a quick word from Coach Taylor as he goes toward the bench. Thomas still on the move. Now this is Jackson. Jackson lost his dribble, pushes out front. Steel pumps a three and got it for the Marauders. So Steele with a good look. Three-point shooting for the Marauders continues in this second half. Marauders on a long drought in terms of a win. Nice shovel pass inside. Hallman over to Jones. And Jones, he finishes it from there. Rico with a great assist on the inside. Shot out front by Jackson's off the mark. Hallman with the rebound over to Boyd. Central State. 11 game losing skid, trying to see if they can't break that this afternoon. You gotta go all the way back to January 7th to find their last win. And that was against Spring Hill. They'll meet Spring Hill on Monday. Hopefully they're still looking for a win. Tuskegee right now by 10 with 16-14 remaining in the basketball game. It's Hallman, Booker, Dully, Jones, and Pennington out on the floor now. The sophomore making it back out for Coach Taylor. Up top, DeAnthony pushes it. Jones now to Dully. On Jackson, got a size advantage there. Steve knows it to the rack and shot it with the floater inside. It's exactly what Coach Taylor and the 
team of Tuskegee recognized that there was a size differential with Jackson and Dully, and Steve went right to work for the basket for Tuskegee. Tuskegee by 12. Jackson got a shot, partially deflected in the paint. Boy, a whistle on that one. Pretty tough to fathom that one. Dolly, they'll get Dully for the foul, but on the inside, they just all went up. Jackson with a poor shot selection inside the paint, but he got bailed out with a foul call. 15-35 left in the basketball game. Tuskegee with a 12-point lead, 56-44. I think we'll take a break here. Or we'll stay here. We'll stay here on this one, no problem. Take a look at Coach Benchy Taylor talking to the officials as they took the time out. The Tuskegee University National Athletic Association is a proud sponsor of our broadcast coverage of Golden Tigers basketball. To find out how you can join this elite group of supporters of Tuskegee University Athletics, all you got to do is visit their site, Tuskegee University National Athletic Association, at www.tuskegee.edu forward slash T-U-N-A-A. That's tuskegee.edu forward slash T-U-N-A-A. I hope you'll take a chance to just by watching our broadcast if you're happy with what you're seeing here. Feed into the organization that's helping us make these broadcasts possible. Join the association and find out some of the other great things that they're doing in support of Tuskegee Athletics. And surely after you find that out, if you didn't see Colonel Sullins at a halftime on the remote interview, take a gander at their website and then you'll see that it's an organization worth supporting because they support Tuskegee Athletics. Jackson to the free throw line for the Marauders after the timeout. They call the foul on Dully. And Coach Antonio Davis and Benji Taylor kind of jog jacking at each other. Friendly so as Jackson got the first from the line. We'll get a shot of that if we can of the two coaches at the sideline. Finally, Antonio just <laughs> breaks away toward the other end of the bench. <laughs> I've had enough of you, Benji. 15.30 left in the ball game. Coaches in this conference get along so well. Great example of it down there. On the move, Hallman's got some space. This one hit the back of the iron. Page clears for the Marauders. They trail by 10. Still, quick step, Pennington right in the face of that pass. They're trying to squeeze it in the corner there to Scott. That'd be Anthony with a great defensive play there. Page can't run it down. He and Jackson not on the same page with the pass. Turnover gives it back to Tuskegee. And that forces Coach Antonio Davis to kind of do a windmill thing down there. I don't know if that's some kind of new dance or just what, but it was kind of a flailing of the arm type thing there by Coach Davis. <laughs> As we go back the other way, Tuskegee with the lead and the basketball. Pennington pushes across the Florida Dully. Nice push pass in the corner. Back to Steve. Thought three. Now back over to Pennington. The Anthony hard push at the lock. Nice pass. shuttle pass on the inside by the sophomore. And Hallman able to finish. The Anthony Pennington, the sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri, showing all kinds of promise for Coach Taylor just as a sophomore. This basketball ac acumen is really off the charts in terms of some of the decisions he makes on the floor. He's going to represent well the future of Tuskegee basketball. Great pass that into the floor, down at the block, saw the space, bounced it inside, and Holman got an easy lay-in as a result. Dully takes a seat. as Greg Boyd but comes back out on the floor. So it's Jones, Hallman, Boyd, Booker, and Pennington out now for the Tigers. Entry pass at the block, and there Jones just took it away, and they are going to call a foul down low on Raven Thomas coming underneath Jones. Perfect example of Jones' athleticism that trip down the floor. Able to keep his balance, and the basketball goes over to Tuskegee with a 12-point lead. The senior Booker, 
Holman across the floor. Boyd, head fake. Nice push. Now back over to Pennington. Pennington, Hallman at the block. Jones. Jones beat the defense. Oh, yeah. Good ball movement. Good finish there by Jones with the flush at the block. 13-58. Take a look at this. Good quick pass on the inside. And Jones, no doubt about it. You won't get in his way that close to the rack. You can try it, but you may lose a wrist. Scott out front. Shuttle pass inside the page. He spins left side. Spinner's off the mark. Fought for his own rebound. Got it. Missed on the shot. Hallman credited with the rebound. Over to Boyd. Across the floor, Booker. Entry pass, Hallman. Nice shuttle at the block again. Jones to the rack. Got the lay-in. The duo does it again. Hallman to Jones. Assist to Hallman. Jones finishes for Tuskegee. Watch this no-look job there. Nice done at the baseline. And Jones just so strong, able to finish even after the foul by Page on the inside. The rhythm belongs to the Golden Tigers. 13-25 remains. Timeout on the floor. They lead it 62-46. Quick break here on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. Back live inside the Chappie James Center. Tuskegee building on his lead now. They lead at 62-46 as we go to 13-25 remaining. And at the line is Martez Jones, the sophomore from right here in Tuskegee, Alabama, to shoot. Jones missed on the free throw. Basketball over to Central State. Scott pushes Steele with the jumper. Front of the iron, top of the cylinder. Jones clears that one. Over to Boyd. Greg Hallman, Rico in the paint. Now the duo again, not again, guys. <laughs> Look at the guys go to work inside. <laughs> So much attention to the guards. Hallman on the inside. Here comes the replay at you. Another no-looker either there. Bam, right there. Three times down the floor and three times that combo of the duo there has been successful for Tuskegee. 64-46. And our camera crew right on top of all that action. Basketball actually went off of Scott, but we'll see who we'll keep it with. Central State. I think Marcus kind of realizes he got away with one there. That basketball hit him on his knee area and he pushed it out of bounds. Out front, Marauders with the basketball. Bounce it at the block page. It got challenged on the inside by Booker. Good job by Devin. He'll come away with the rebound as a result. Denied Page. Here comes Booker to the rack. Reverse lay in. Oh, yeah! Booker! Challenge the defense. Take a look at this athleticism. Hold, hold, hold. And spinner good by Booker. He'll hold the pose for a second before he goes to the free throw line. Producer Eric Moore saying that was kind of Jordan-esque, and I think I have to agree with him on that. Booker very poised on that shot on the lay-in. Finishes the three-pointer with the... Free throw from the line. 12.30 remains in the basketball game. Tuskegee inching away now, 67-46. Jackson up top. This is Thomas. Over to Steele. At the block, Scott doubled there. Back out, they got seven to shoot. Steele, foul on extended, got some space, missed on the shot. 
Rebound, Booker, back-to-back -back rebounds for him. Pushes up the floor, Draper behind the defense. In play, saved it, and got a stuff at the block. Draper with the footwork. Assist by Booker. The lead to 23 now for Tuskegee. Scott, work its left block underneath in traffic to Jackson. Tie up down low, jump ball called. I think it'll stay with the Marauders, but you gotta celebrate that defensive effort by Devin Booker. Boy, this Tuskegee team is really starting to blossom at the right time. We talked to Coach Jones early when we started broadcasting the ball games, way back when we did the Lamont on game. As you take a look at Draper, a little tiptoe dance there at the sideline. Stayed in the play and got the flush. He said back then that this team was really starting to come around. They had some early problems in terms of practice sessions. Some players out sick, and they just could not get their full rhythm of practice in. But as this season has unfolded and they are starting to work more as a team in terms of regular practice schedules, you are starting to see the results. This team is, just, is relentless in terms of its defensive effort and a quality shooting team as well. The Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference and TIAA and Cricket Wireless are pleased to bring this year's TIAA Basketball Championship Tournament to the hostess city of the South, Savannah, Georgia. Join us for eight days of competition as 29 teams compete for the coveted SIAC Women and Men's Basketball Crown. Meet us there on Saturday, February 25th for the tip-off of the 2023 TIAA SIAC Basketball Championship from Savannah State University's Tiger Arena. Conference champions will be crowned on, the, on Saturday, March the 4th. For more ticket information, tournament information, and announcements, you can visit the www.thesiac.com website, and you'll get all the information you need to get yourself set for tournament action starting next Saturday in Savannah, Georgia. Back out on the floor, Tuskegee with the lead, and 11.34 left in the basketball game. Booker just in front of the Tuskegee bench. Leans back with the jumper to the cylinder. Shots off the mark. Draper clears. Got the flush inside for Tuskegee. Draper just pushing Page off saying, get out of here. And got space to the rack for the dunk. Scott trying to quell things here a bit with the floater, and he does. Boyd in the front court for Tuskegee now. Pennington pops out. Alley oop. Draper. That was timed. They missed on the dunk, though. That was a time play there and intentional by Tuskegee. Steele challenges inside. Missed on the shot as Hallman made him change his shot. And Hallman will lead a break for Tuskegee. Rico, right side. Boyd pushes a three. Missed on the shot. Draper with a rebound. Draper to the rack, and he'll finish. This tempo definitely favors Tuskegee. Page at the block. Pennington covers. Draper slides back in for defensive purposes. Page on the floor. Pennington ties him up. Jump ball and the basketball to Tuskegee. Great job there by the sophomore to get into the fray. Great job by the freshman Draper to get into the fray. And they force Page into a tie-up in the basketball. Well, looks like the arrow favors the Marauders essentially. So they'll have it. The whistles on the entry. They call the foul on Boyd trying to catch up with Scott on the entry play. Scott free, pops a three, trains it for the Marauders. Boy, you have just got to be on top of him, any space, and he'll make you pay. Greg knows that. That's why he's shadowing him so closely. That's why he picked up that foul on the entry pass. Booker out front now. He'll cross dribble. Got space. Steps behind the arc. Booker books it again for Tuskegee. That's too easy for him. Scott trying to anticipate the move of Key. Threw it to the inside. Key was staying outside, and that means that's a turnover. Bowlware back out on the floor for Coach Davis. Tuskegee with the 76-51 lead.
Booker, right side, got some space. Nice cross goal, back again for three. Count it again. Devin Booker just on fire here inside Chappie James. The lead now up to 28 for Tuskegee. And Coach Davis. Now we got a foul called out there on boys just in front of Coach Davis and the Marauders. Steve Dully out on the floor. Boy takes a seat. Our correction going out there on the floor is Chip Culpepper. Now Dully comes out. Holman takes a seat. Greg Boyd takes a seat. So Chip Culpepper, the redshirt freshman from Hoover, his first spot at play here this afternoon. Probably going to see that with nine minutes, 30 seconds remaining, that Coach Taylor is going to go to that bench pretty heavily here with that comfortable lead of 28 points. Scott, over to Moore. Key handles now. Booker went for the steal. Key, foul on extended, and he got the jumper. Booker. Got space behind the arc for three. This one at the front of the iron. Key saves it, but he got it right over to Culpepper. Culpepper underneath, fouled by Moore. And Chip Culpepper will go to the line for Tuskegee. Take a look at that replay down low. That was just Moore saying, I'm going to grab you. I'm not going to let you get this late. <laughs> so Booker takes a seat. Booker's just lit it up here inside Chappie James. Players standing and high-fiving five him as he goes to the bench. And Culpepper to the sideline, or to the free throw line now for Tuskegee. We are under nine minutes remaining here. Cole Pepper rattles the first one again. So the Tuskegee lead to 27. So then this roster here so far. A 28-point lead could be their largest margin of victory of the season if they can keep it there around that mark. Key pushes left block for the Marauders. Reverse lay in by him, and he got it. Stephen Key, the freshman from Cleveland, Ohio. Nice move by him in basket. The Anthony Pennington got a screen right side. Whistles and a push off there. Marcus Scott commits that foul. Nine shooting foul. It'll be side out for Tuskegee. Culpepper to inbound it. Devereaux Davis got it out front, calling for it over to Pennington. Dully on a turn, got space for three. Whistles on the three-point effort. He'll go to the line shooting. Steve to shoot, clearly behind the arc with the shot. Almost made that three-pointer as well. A chance for that rare four-point play. Eric, I'm going to go ahead and call those spats. Kind of an aqua color there for Dully at the line as he knocks down that free throw. Dully for the second. And he knocked that one down as well. For our chance for the three free throws in a row on a missed three-point shot. There we get a look at those bats. Do you agree with me on that color? I'm not that great in terms of identifying colors, but that uh, looks kind of like an aqua look to me. The right side, Jackson for three. You got the rimmer to fall for the Marauders. Time out on the floor, 18, 8 14 remains. Tuskegee with an 84 58 lead. Let's take a look down in the corner. Jackson got some space. Dully was chasing or closing, but didn't get there soon enough. 
So the Marauders of Central State, they certainly sport some players that are capable shooters from the outside. You saw that basket by Jackson, and you've seen it throughout the ball game that Marcus Scott has been one of their more prolific shooters in the ball game. Quick time out here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, future business leader, launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University, we get the business of business education. Back live inside Chappie James, 814 remains. Tuskegee with a commanding 84-58 lead over the Marauders of Central State. Tuskegee will have the basketball to resume play. And we'll resume our coverage of Tuskegee basketball here on Monday. Our final broadcast of the season, final home ball game of the season for Tuskegee basketball, Tigerettes. And the Tigers will be hosting the Thoroughbreds and Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State to close the regular season. Then you pack up the gear and head to Savannah. Tournament action starting next Saturday. Entry pass batted away and out of bounds. It will stay with Tuskegee. Pennington set to inbound it. Entry pass to Kasami. Back to DeAnthony. Tuskegee, now we'll see if they want to burn some time off the clock before they get these shots going. Devereau Davis whistles. It's going to be... They call that on Draper. Draper fighting for some position down low away from the basketball with Page. And they caught Kapsami for the foul. Scott out front for the Marauders. Across the floor. Dangerous pass. Jackson there, though. Head faked by Key. He'll push right side. Got some space. Knocks down another jumper. This guy Key is another for Central State that can fill the basket. Just a freshman. Pennington out front for Tuskegee. Lead to 24. Devereaux pops out front. Over to DeAnthony. Shovel pass inside the Draper. Draper on Page. He'll have to backpedal. Now he'll reset. Draper pushes to the glass. Oh, yeah. Just wouldn't stay for him, though. Good job by the freshman to work it on the inside. Key out front for Central State. Scully going for a steal, almost taking it away. At the sideline. Rico Hallman. Great job by Hallman. He's back out on the floor as Cole Pepper takes a seat. Want to see more of that Hallman Jones duo shown out here in the second half of basketball. Connected on three beautiful trips down the floor with a give and go, no look type situation for easy baskets. Page away from the basket for the Marauders. They're trying to dump it down low. And good defensive work by the long arm Devereaux Davis to block that play and knock the basketball out of bounds. It'll be a reset for Central State with 10 to shoot. Jackson to inbound it. Scott, foul on extended. Back over to Thomas. Four to shoot. Jackson looking for space. Has to change up. Key out front. Shot and air ball. Shot clock violation back over to the Golden Tigers. That's a quality look defensively down low for Tuskegee. When you're leading a basketball game by 24 points and you force the opposition to run the clock all the way down before they can get a shot off, which theoretically you would think they would be hurrying to get more shots with the time remaining, but a good job by the defense to force them all the way down on a violation. Hallman, left pass to Dully. We're down to 6.30 left in the basketball game. Steve trying to work off a screen. Got some space. Now picked up. Draper foul on extended with the jumper. Creased the rim. Scott comes clear for the Marauders. Three on two basketball. But Scott holds up and gives it back to Key with a jumper. And jump Key missed and whistles down low. Thomas had the inside advantage on Draper. And likely Draper going to be. Yeah, he will be called for the foul. So Kasami picks up his second, and that sends the freshman Ravon Thomas to the line, shooting for the Marauders of Central State. Let's 
Thomas got the first. Hope you're enjoying our coverage of Tuskegee basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. We extend our thanks once again to the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association for its support of our broadcast coverage. Also another thank you to the Follett Bookstore on the campus. Store manager Deborah, Deborah Blanton and assistant manager William Thomas helping us out with some swag as we conclude our coverage here today and on Friday, on Monday of this coming week in the regular season. As players gather around Coach Davis at the scorer's table, Ken Washington trying to get some clarity out on something on the floor or from the scorer's table before play resumes on the floor. Going back to the line will be Levin Thomas, Levon Thomas, the freshman from Detroit. Right now it's Jones, Davis, Hallman, Boyd, and Booker out on the floor for Tuskegee. Boyd handles in the backcourt. Scott will pick him up there defensively. Greg across the timeline. Up top to Hallman. On the weave, it's Booker now. Devin back across the floor to Devereaux. Devereaux got some space. Oh, yeah! Booker saw that all the way. He drew the defense in, got it to Devereaux, and Devereaux punched it in from there. Davis at the block, take away there. Good job. Up the floor, Booker. Booker, ranges, got a three, drains the three. Just took his time on that one, let the defense fly by, and he took care of it from there. Such a shooter's touch. Out front, Jackson with the shooter's touch. Hit the back of the iron though. Boyd pushing for Tuskegee. Up the floor there behind the defense and missing on the flush was Jones on the inside. Got his rebound though and a put back on the left side. So Jones able to recover and got the basket. 91-62 Tuskegee with the lead. Whistles as Scott penetrates. So Scott will be shooting here. Thomas getting set to come back out on the floor for Coach Davis. Quite a show this afternoon for Devin Booker. Started the game out hitting his first three field goals. All three of those were three pointers. And has come alive again here in the second half. They have just stripped the will of the Marauders of Central State by virtue of what they have done from the floor. Tuskegee has. Scott with one more coming. Tuskegee in the first half against Spring Hill in their last ball game prior to this one they shot 58% from the floor in the first half 18 of 31 and they countered that in the second half with 46% shooting from the floor 12 of 26 and that kind of performance from the floor is carried over to this Saturday afternoon against the Marauders of Central State Boyd left side pushing all the way through shot rejected at the block by Thomas Jackson with a run out for the Marauders Head fake to the rack, and he got a lay-in. We're under five minutes remaining. Booker handles for Tuskegee. Booker got some space, thought about the three, pushes to Devereaux Davis instead. 
Davis to Hallman. Rico cut off by Key on the defense. Ten to shoot. Devereaux down at the block. This time, Jones doesn't miss the flush. Got the space and got the result he wanted. Thunderous dunk there by Jones inside. Missed on the previous trip down the floor, but got the rebound and a lay-in. Didn't miss the dunk this trip. 93-66, Tuskegee. Chance to break 100. That would be for the first time on the season. 349 remains in the basketball game. Still pushes a three, shot an air ball. Had to do that before the shot clock violation. 340 left in the basketball game. And this ball game, all in favor of the Tigers of Tuskegee. Look at there, Davis at the block. And the rest of that is history. Jones nails the dunk. And Tuskegee nailing things here inside Chappie James. 93-66, they lead it. Take a quick break here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Want to see some quality basketball. Look at that. Davis with the pass behind the defense. Jones, no doubt about it, on the flush. Kind of play that we're talking about there that just exacts the presence of Tuskegee and just zaps the will of the Marauders of Central State on that type play. We've seen a couple of those in this second half of play and shots from the floor as well. They have just pulled everything out of Central State. They're just trying to hang on now to minimize the damage with 3.39 remaining. Pennington comes across the floor for Tuskegee. Over to Draper. Up top is Whistles away from the basketball. A couple of substitutions out on the floor now for Coach Taylor. Out on the floor now is Bryce Cummings, the freshman from Tallahassee, Florida. Cameron Butler, the freshman from Los Angeles, California, out on the floor. And Evan Howell, the sophomore from Snellville, Georgia, out on the floor for Coach Taylor in Tuskegee. Only Pennington and Draper, the remainers, as deep from outside, Jackson drops a three-pointer. Pennington across the timeline now as we go to 3.20 remaining. The Anthony works it across the floor. Butler. Down at the block, gives it over to Cummings. Now at the block is Howell. Back out front, Pennington, 60 shoot. DeAnthony fades at the foul line, missed on the shot. Basketball tapped around, comes clear to Scott and the Marauders. Scott to Jackson. We go down to 250 left. Key leans back with the jumper, partially deflected. Basketball, Pennington across the floor to Butler. Butler free lane to the basket, underneath, and he got the lay -in. Cameron Butler, the freshman, no points on the season, so he celebrates his first field goal on the season for Tuskegee. Down at the block, Thomas pushes back out to Scott. And we push our way down to 220 remaining. Scott, long three-pointer from out front, front of the iron. Howell clears the rebound for the Golden Tigers. Pennington out front. No, 120 seconds left in the ball game. Five to shoot. DeAnthony slides left side, floater. Tried to go to the glass, missed on the shot. Shot clock, they reset, they gotta hurry. Draper challenges on the inside and he drew a foul. So Draper headed straight to the rack for Tuskegee. Drew a foul to be shooting here with a minute 47 remaining. So Tuskegee looking to make it three in a row 
as they close in on the end of the season. As you take a look at Draper on the Aaron shot, Hedzie enough to know that he had to go back inside, and he went in strong, and he drew a foul. So the freshman will be shooting for Tuskegee, and Bolware comes back out on the floor for Central State. Draper missed on the first. Boldware clears for the Marauders. Key behind the arc, left side, missed on the shot. Pennington there is backside for the rebound for the Golden Tigers. This is Cummings, the freshman, handling out front. Get a chance to see some of these younger players that will be certainly playing a bigger role for Tuskegee coming into next season. Draper, hard push right side, spins inside the paint to the rack, drew a whistle. So Draper going to work on the inside. These are some good reps for him on the inside as well to continue attacking that basket. Likely won't have that that easy during the tournament, but here, at the hard push there to spin back to the inside. So Draper, just a freshman. Still a lot of work ahead for him to develop into the player that he can eventually be for Tuskegee. Got that first free throw. A minute nine left. Tuskegee just four points shy of hitting the century mark. Draper missed on the free throw. Basketball comes clear. This is Cummings. Foul on extended. Howell missed on the shot. Key pushes out for the Marauders. Jackson fires. Front iron on the shot. Cummings with the rebound. Out the floor to Pennington. Three on two basketball. Alley-oop Draper can't convert on the alley-oop dunk. Scott back the other way. Jackson stutters. Fires the three. Left it on the front cylinder. Scott floater in the paint. He missed. Page got the rebound. Kicks it back out. Bowler across the floor. And with 34 seconds left, Scott going to fire one from out front. Missed on the shot, Pennington at the baseline to clear. 27 seconds left. Left corner, jumper, it is good. Cameron Butler, the freshman from Los Angeles. Two field goals for him in late in this ball game. And the West Coast native on fire after dropping a couple of field goals. First four points of the season for him. Push pass down the floor and the freshman from L.A. I love L.A. Nice job by Butler down the floor. 98-69. Just two points shy of the 100 for Tuskegee, but they will take the win. Out front, Scott head fakes. Bowware lost it out of bounds. 5.8 seconds left. Tuskegee with a chance for, if they can get a basket here with 5.8, they'll take it to an even 100 in the ball game. Allman. Going to hold it here in the backcourt, though. Likely not even going to take a shot at it. They will not, will not. Classy move there by the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. They win it. 98-69 over the Marauders of Central State. And Tuskegee, great performance by them during this ball game. They win it by 29. And just surveying the schedule for them this year, that's their largest margin of victory over the course over this of the season over the marauders of central state and overall with the 98 points this afternoon they win it by 29 over central state no doubt about it excellent win we're hoping we get a chance to talk to coach taylor after the ball game after an exciting contest for tuskegee everything falling well for them in this contest be curious to see what their field goal percentage is from the floor they shot the basketball extremely well and got the basketball into the on the inside to some of the bigger players. So they really affected both sides of the floor extremely well in this win. The win will take Tuskegee to 19 and seven overall and 14 and five in conference play. And Central State will continue to look 
for a win. They dropped their 12th in a row with a loss this afternoon. They'll go to 5-20 and 20 on the campaign and 5-14 and 14 in SIAC play. Take a break here. Come back. Wrap things up. Hope to get a chance to talk to Coach Taylor for the Tigers of Tuskegee. This is Golden Tigers basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. There's something to do every single day, especially homecoming. It's insane on, on game day. Everybody was having a great time. The students were out in the shed cheering on the football team. So it also made me really um, excited about joining the Marching Crimson Piper Band because they are another support system for the football team. The band also plays for the volleyball team. Sometimes you go to the baseball and softball team games as well. It is very easy to get involved here at Tuskegee University. There are so many student organizations, whether that's um, student Government Association, the choir, you have clubs within your colleges. There's literally a place for everybody here at Tuskegee University. Tuskegee is a very diverse campus. Even though Tuskegee University is a historically black college, we have different races, different cultures from the students to the faculty. Tuskegee University molds its students into great leaders. We learn how should we look in corporate America, how should we speak in corporate America, and things of that nature. We bring back people who work for um, major companies to kind of give you how they got there, what were their resources they utilized here at the university to get to their level as well. Tuskegee didn't start off as a big campus. It started off in a small shack in the back of a church. The focus was always to build the community up. We share in a culture together that um, is kind of hard to explain. You gotta live it, you gotta enjoy it. It's the HBCU experience. It's nothing short than, than beautiful. So my name is Dia Hunter. I am an assistant professor of construction management here at Tuskegee. The students make the institution special. You're gonna deal with students that are brilliant, students who have a mind for construction. They bring diverse backgrounds, diverse ways of life. I love sharing this with students. I love giving them the tools that they need in order to be great at it. Just because we're at HBCU doesn't mean our education is, is different. Don't get me wrong, we have different values and traditions and culture and things like that. So we're gonna have different outlooks, different understandings on things, and that makes for a better company is Diverse Minds. I am Kaylin Parham, a graduating senior, construction science and management major, hailing from the Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. And to be a part of Tuskegee University's construction science and management program is to be a part of history. If, in this field, I'm, I'm underrepresented. I'm a black woman, so obviously it's not going to be a lot of people like me, and that's okay because we're still working for diversity, but the part that I would like to see more is the inclusion part. So yes, you have a black girl here and an Asian guy there, but do they feel comfortable in this environment? Do they feel like they're actually a part of the team? Let's start with HBCUs and coming here and getting to know our students and our programs, you'll see that not only are we coming with the knowledge that you need us to have, but we also have some different perspectives you might not have. We have to give back. Everybody counts or nobody counts. And that's gotta be part of the leadership. By Procore taking the lead on this scholarship program and partnering with AGC as a Grand Slam home run. Well, I'm Bob Bowen, chairman and founder of Bowen Engineering. We can make a real difference in our industry, in our community, in our society. We're a better place to go than Tuskegee or the, or the other HBCUs. The Living the Veil of Ignorance statue represents Booker T. Washington telling all the slaves what they can be in the world. Today, I think the Living the Veil statue represents what we are showing the world. Hey, we got great students that can produce great work in all disciplines. HBCUs produce top students. My name is Dr. Shauna L. Rogers. I'm a associate professor at Tuskegee University. Right now, diversity 
is what we need in this country. Specifically construction, we're running out of workers. The more that we are open to diversity, the more we're open to giving these students chances get to make everything better. Hey, we're here. It's 11 HBCUs that offer construction science, construction management. All 11 have great students. All 11 are well prepared. You just gotta give them a chance. We are back live here inside Chappie James Center. Another good day of basketball for Tuskegee University. The women win their ball game earlier today. And Tuskegee, with their best performance of the season in terms of scoring, they win at 98-69 over the Marauders of Central State, their largest margin of victory during the course of the season. Waiting on Coach Taylor to join us up here at the broadcast table to get his thoughts about this ball game. One thought that clearly comes to mind in this contest is that this was a day for Devin Booker. Booker finished with 26 points for Tuskegee, kind of leading their charge early on. Started the ball game out hitting his first three field goals, and all three of those were three points baskets. And it just continued for him and Tuskegee. And as this ball game continued to wear on and on, things from all parts of the floor just working extremely well for Tuskegee with the players down low inside the paint. Good, tough defense causing turnovers by the Marauders of Central State and converting on those turnovers. Everybody into the scoring column tonight. Also some awesome passing from some of the big men with Rico Hallman inside to Martez Jones to finish on a couple of those for some great work on the inside. Coach Taylor getting set to join us right here. We'll step out for a quick 15-second timeout, and we'll have him to get his thoughts on the ball game. This is the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Are you looking for education that leads to career success and something more? We are Tuskegee University, one of the nation's top ranked HBCUs. We believe in education to fulfill your purpose. Here, you work hard because you dream harder. By pursuing your purpose, you will make a difference. Are you ready for something big? Let's get started. Are you looking for education that leads to career success and something more? We are Tuskegee University, one of the nation's top ranked HBCUs. We believe in education to fulfill your purpose. Here, you work hard because you dream harder. By pursuing your purpose, you will make a difference. Under the chair. Are yeah, you ready for something is. big? Let's get started. And we're back live here inside the Chappie James Center as Tuskegee wins this basketball game running away 98-69 over the Marauders of Central State in a basketball game that uh, Tuskegee just got everything together on the floor. And the man that's behind them getting everything together on the floor is joining me now in postgame, head coach Benji Taylor. Coach, thanks for joining us after the ball game. Yeah, I appreciate you having us. And uh, once again, thank you for all you do for the production and everything and, and getting the SIAC message out. Well, it was about production tonight for your guys up there. <laughs> yeah, Almost yeah. Hit, hit the century mark in terms of scoring, yeah. but your largest scoring margin on the regular season. Your mm -hmm. thoughts about the ball game overall? I, I thought we uh, defensively, we got a little lax in the first half, and we talked about the second half of, of keeping them to a number that we wanted to keep them to, and we, we came close to doing that. I think the first maybe nine, ten minutes of the second half, I thought they had, had maybe seven, five or seven points. Um, you know, we, uh, they made some shots early. They were five for seven. They shot 56% yep. in the first half. And all we talked about at halftime was defense. We made a few adjustments, and uh, the guys responded well. And um, uh, we were 50% in the first half, which Indeed. is high Ourselves, for us. Right. But <laughs> I, I was fine with our score. I just didn't like them having 39. So, you know, we got a, we got a pretty mature group. I can coach them really hard. And they uh, – Defensively, they made me get out my jacket at halftime. So I had to, I I almost took the tie off and everything. <laughs> I almost came back out here with a sweatsuit on. Let, let me shoot some around <laughs> with a golf t-shirt. I tell right? you, man, I tell you, but uh, this is a fun group. Indeed. Indeed it was. And 
we're getting close to senior night on Monday night, but just to see the performance of some of your seniors in the ball game today, yeah. particularly Devin Booker, just yeah. really kind of came into his own on the floor. Started the ball game out hot, mm -hmm. first three field goals with three pointers, yeah. and just continue yeah. that into the second half as you all really start to set that tempo and pace that yeah. favored the Golden Tigers. Yeah, uh, you know Devin's a he's just as a high high IQ player. He makes uh, plays on both ends. He's really a truly a combo. We could play him at the one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter. He just makes a lot of plays. Uh, he can, he's actually sacrificing him and Greg are sacrificing scoring to make us better. And uh, but yeah, he, the seniors play the seniors play great. Um, but you know our uh, uh, returners had a great week of practice. And it showed today, Rico Harmon, Martez Indeed. Jones, and DeAnthony uh, Pennington, they had a great week of practice pushing our guys. And, uh, shoot, we scrimmaged a couple of days, and they beat the starting lineup. Wow. Okay. And uh, so they deserved it. That's why they played well. We, we've been really competing in practice and, and uh, because uh, we, we have to get better. We have to compete. We have to learn how to play physical and make plays. And, and um, that's, been our, that's been our focus. We don't take days off, and we, we get after them pretty good. You may not recall this, but once we, when we first started doing the broadcast early on in the season, you, you referenced exactly what you're talking about now, the fact that it was, it was difficult getting a practice schedule yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, and now yeah, the yeah. things that you've gotten the practice together, yeah. what's showing on the floor seems to be a direct yeah. result of that. Yeah, we, we, you know, uh, having, a, having a, being able to practice and actually tape up and go hard and get hit and take some hits and, sure. and uh, make some mistakes, um, and to learn from them and practice, I mean, we went on a stretch there where I think we played six games and we were going to practice one day before every game. From right. January 2nd, from January 1st until like the 19th or 20th, after the lane game, we only practiced one day before every game. Part of it was a tornado. Mm -hmm. um, part of it was travel. I, we spent 10 days on the road and played four games. We only practiced and played one day. So we, you're pretty much getting ready for the other team. You're not concentrating on sure. yourself. Sure, sure. Now we have an opportunity to concentrate on us. So I think it's going to make us better, and we just got to be smart about it and, um, and uh, make sure we can keep our legs and everything. One other point that we talked about early on in the season, I know it's still a work in progress with our, mm -hmm. with our guys inside. Rico Hallman and that combination of Martez Jones is after yeah. it was just so special. Three trips down the floor where they were just <laughs> in total sync, yeah. where they got yeah. the bounce pass, yeah. got the easy lay-in. Yeah. And it may be a testament to what you're talking about, that now they're just getting used to each other on the floor. But that was just outstanding basketball. We, we know we, um, a lot of people say, you know, like Lebr LeBron, Le LeBron James' statement was a negative. Man, we top heavy. You know, right. we got five seniors, but I, I really, really feel comfortable with our nucleus that's coming back. Mm -hmm. So we got good balance. I think we're pretty deep. But, um, you know, Martez is a heck of a player. Oh, and no so doubt. is Rico. And so is the De Anthony Pennington started the first five games because Greg had the car wreck and, um, and, and Devin Booker was out. We went 5-0 and with DP starting at the point and playing 35 <laughs> minutes. People forget that. Yep. Out of our 26 games, I think we've only had our, our entire team 18 so we wow. always are trying to maneuver and, and get guys in and out. And then Martez was sick for a while. Mm -hmm. Remember so, that. Um, yeah, we, we, uh, it's been a fun group. They, they're, they're, uh, they're a close group. It's a fun group. It's a tough group. And, um, you know, a lot of people forget this. You know, last year, Greg was preseason player of the year. Mm -hmm. He didn't play because of his knee. And then Mason Green, our starting five man towards Achilles. And we still finished second. So... It's, it's, it's kind of time for us to kind of get over the hump, and mm -hmm. uh, I think the guys understand that, and they understand the pressure of that. And, they're, they're, and the West is tough, and the East is tough. It, it, this is the most parity I've seen in the conference since I've been here. Um, Lane's playing great basketball. I think they've sure. won seven in a row, and Morehouse has won seven or eight in a row. They got both got tough games today, but I, I – uh, I'm looking forward to Savannah, but I'm not looking forward to Savannah. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, 100%. Uh, right. you know, I'm going I'm to get a lot of sleep in uh, after uh, I can take a state game, and I'm, I'm going to sleep in, uh, and, and just go to sleep for a few days because I'm not going to get any preparing for Savannah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, uh, a great tournament. You, what's your sense at this point, whether we finish one or two in the West, we're still going to be, what, quarterfinals before they actually played in the tournament? Yeah, we'll, we'll get a bye. Well, if we win Monday, we win the league. Mm -hmm. Or if Miles lose tonight, we win the league. Okay. Uh, because uh, we, uh, we hold a tiebreaker. Now, if you look at our SIE website, we've been second or third the yep. entire year, but we've been one or two the entire, entire okay. conference season. And uh, 
Um, I told my guys, I don't even look at that stuff. You know, I try to keep them off social media. I try to keep them off the website. Coach, why they got us third? I mean, it uh-huh. doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, We're in Savannah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, well, what about the games we lost we shouldn't have lost? Like, you know, so, sure. you know, at the end of the day, man, you got to play the game. And, and uh, you know, I, I told my guys a few days ago that hay is in the barn, man. I, I just really uh, – I'm going to enjoy coaching you guys down the stretch, and I don't want you to play tight. And I want you to play together. And they – they really did tonight. You know, we, um, you know, Central State came out hot. They're, sure. they're good. Sure. I mean, they've taken teams down to the wire. They, you know, it, it, it's, they're good. No, I'll, I'll tell you, because well, at, at halftime, I went to the restroom and saw one of our fans in. They said, man, we just can't seem to separate ourselves from him. I was like, well, these guys are good. And then I came back and saw the stats, the thing you just referenced about them shooting so hot from the floor in the first oh, half. Yeah. I was like, wow. He had 20 points and didn't miss a shot. Sure. And then he had free throws, so we were following him on top of it. But he can do that. I mean, sure. Marcus Scott, they won it last year. Sure. At, at sure. Savannah State, he's, he's that type of player. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's a handful. But we just, you know, we wanted to get into his legs. Uh-huh. You know, we wanted to, you know, throw more bodies at him. And uh, we did that. And until he got to lose for the three away from our bench and uh, for the second half, we had did a good job on him. Mm-hmm. But uh, I he's a, I don't even know what it wound up with, but he's a, he's a heck of a player. We've been known to guys get hot in the first half and make adjustments and kind of shut cool them down, down in the second yeah, half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 great. But I'm, I'm glad we finally scoring better and shooting the ball better and executing better. You know, we used to hang our hat on defense and, you know, but now we can actually score the ball a little bit better and, we got to stay stay focused on defense. So you have the Thoroughbreds Kentucky State here on Monday. How are you approaching that ball game? I know it's just the final one on the regular season schedule. Well, it's it's senior night, um, and man, I'm I'm gonna I'm just a big baby, but I'm gonna cry, man. As soon as I walk out, this I'm losing five really sure. good uh, uh, representatives of Tuskegee University. I'm losing five wonderful. Gray's been here since I've been here. And uh, other Steve came in right after that, and man, I'm losing a, a good group. That's that's always at my house. That's a pleasure to coach and pleasure to be around, and and um, it's going to be an emotional night for us. But we got to put all that all that to the side until because Kentucky State's really good. Mm-hmm. They're really athletic. They're really good. Uh, um, we can beat anybody. We can lose anybody. Kentucky State can beat anybody or lose to anybody. So. You know, we certainly want to um, go into Savannah on a good note finally. Um, and then um, our conference tournament, we really have to do what we're supposed to do. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Won't be play against. good basketball. Got to win that thing. Got to play good basketball. Sure. Got to play good basketball, let everything take care of itself. Well, you played excellent basketball here this afternoon in Chappie mm-hmm. James. And on Monday, the Thoroughbreds will come to town. We'll mm-hmm. hope we'll be playing excellent basketball then to finish up yes, the regular sir. season. Outstanding win this afternoon, though, Coach. I know you're going to enjoy your Saturday night after this. Uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy are you Are you going to Savannah? I am, yeah. yeah you're going to yeah. be there, huh? Yep. Okay, yeah, we'll good. We'll be there. Good. We'll be there. Great. The coverage. Yes. Great. Yeah. Uh-huh. great, 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 great. We're yep. looking forward to it. I well, thank you guys so much. Yeah, no worries. Glad to be here. Congratulations, Coach. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. And Coach Vincey right. Taylor, great ball game here this afternoon for his Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Almost breaking the century mark in 98-69, not 67 win over the Marauders of Central State. Coach, thanks. We'll see you here on Monday night. Appreciate you. See you then. Thank you. Take a break here on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Come back with a wrap-up. All right, y'all travel safe now. There's something to do every single day, especially homecoming. It's insane on on game day. Everybody was having a great time. The students were out in the shed cheering on the football team. So it also made me really um, excited about joining the March of Crimson Piper Band because they are another support system for the football team. The band also plays for the volleyball team. Sometimes we go to the baseball and softball team games as well. It is very easy to get involved here at Tuskegee University. There are so many student organizations, whether that's Um, Student Government Association, the choir, you have clubs within your colleges. There's literally a place for everybody here at Tuskegee University. Tuskegee is a very diverse campus.